Tonight, we're ready for a lively, juicy debate between Aaron Ron and Stuart Neckley. Uh, we're going to be debating, is Christianity true? And to start us off, we have Stuart for his up to 10-minute intro. So, Stuart, the floor is all yours, and thanks for being here. Thanks, Aaron. Thanks, Ryan. So, the question, is Christianity rational? Well, there's about five different definitions of rationality in the Webster's Dictionary, all thinking probably the other one is irrational. And so... Rationality is difficult. I think a lot of it has to do with what is the hard evidence, what are the facts. It has a lot to do also with can you show it to me, what's your hypotheses. So many different definitions, but we're going to try and get down to it in terms of the rationality of Christianity tonight in terms of is, is there evidence behind it, what's a healthy hypothesis in looking at it, is there logical consistency, are there things like experiential rationality as well, as well as evidential, um, intellectual side of it. So there's many different angles, but I always start with thinking through different worldviews and I always change up which worldview I'm going to pick on. So I've got some, some new ones tonight, but when I think through say materialism, you know, materialism breaks down for me because you know, if it's true, then reason itself is really impossible. Um, for because the mental processes, I would say, are nothing but chemical reactions in the brain. So there's no reason to believe really that anything is true. Um, chemicals don't reason, they react. So for me, materialism clearly breaks down. It's, it's totally illogical. It's totally non-rational to me. Pluralism is another one I've been talking about recently with people. Pluralism breaks down because it's basically saying we all have different parts of an elephant and pluralism is standing outside of the elephant saying that I have the enlightened perspective on spirituality and you are all just holding different parts of an elephant. None of you are making real exclusive truth claims. And I just want to be a, a liberal snowflake just pummeling you with an avalanche of tears and, and all this supposed tolerance and sensitivity. And so I'm going to say that everything's the same. And we know there's internal contradictions with that. Humanism, I think humanism is simply Christianity light. I think that humanism has just stolen all of the Christian values. Uh, the only thing it hasn't stolen is the story, the Christian story, the narrative, which holds all these values together. So at the end of the day, if you look at it from an evolutionary perspective or a scientific perspective, it really makes no sense if you're a humanist that is a non-Christian humanist. Relativism, I think, breaks down as well. It's another perspective I hear all the time. It's true for you, it's true for you, it's true for me, it's true for me. I would just ask, is that true? I would also say my brother's a professor at a local university, and you know, he could play many cruel tricks on students coming in who say, Oh, why did you give me an F on that paper? And he could simply say, Well, it's all relative, it's subjective. There's well, what's wrong with me giving you an F? It's just my subjective feelings. There's no objective right and wrong here. So there's no real standard. I think if we just look at atheism. More broadly, it's it's really the belief that there was once absolutely nothing and nothing happened to the nothing until the nothing magically exploded for no reason, creating everything and everywhere. Then a bunch of the exploded everything magically rearranged itself for no reason whatsoever into self-replicating bits that turned into dinosaurs. That's kind of my my reasoning on the rationality of of atheism. And and scientism is what oftentimes we get into here on these debates and thinking further through on scientism, you know, there's really no discovery. Oftentimes people say, well, just science, there's, there's science and no God. Well, there's no discovery of science that has the least tendency to show that there is no God. That's Peter Van Inwagen at Harvard said that. So, so science can't prove, obviously, things like logic and math can't prove it. It can't prove metaphysical truths, can't prove ethical truths, morality, aesthetic judgments. Science can't even prove itself because it's permeated with unprovable assumptions. The theory of relativity hinges on speed of light and being constant between A and B. So it's accepted, but in no way can it be proven. And, and for me, an illustration that I use is, is atheism and theism. Let's say if they were both dabbling in magic and pulling a rabbit out of the hat, well, atheism is worse than magic because you just have the bunny coming out of the hat. You have no magician. So... Those are some of my worldview perspectives that I've been thinking about, but getting more specifically into why I am a Christian and why I believe it's rational, 
Well, I think you need to have origin, meaning, morality, and destiny. You know, origin, where are you coming from? Big questions that are metaphysical, like where did we get all people are created equal? Where did we get value for human beings? Why are human beings more valuable than the horse, the pony I'm getting for my girls? I mean, I, if that horse suffers at the same level as my girls, if that horse has the same level of reasoning, say if one of my girls, for example, was handicapped, how, why, why doesn't that horse have the equal value as, as my daughter? It makes no sense from a place of origin. And second, meaning. There's no objective meaning in atheism. There's, there's nothing bright and happy about the ultimate heat death of the universe and are things really not having any long-lasting meaning and purpose, all the things that we do, all the relationships we stack up here on this planet. Morality, we know there's breakdown in morality, objective morality. The breakdown into, you know, I don't think Aaron's a relativist, but... I, I see a very hard stake to make in terms of the oughtness and the shouldness and the objective morals without a God. And then finally, destiny. You know, you got to make sense of destiny. Where are you going? Are you just going to the to Gehenna? Or are you just going to the worm pit? Or is there something more? Are you, are you falling through this life, out of this life, into the loving arms of a creator? And I think we all want that. I think C.S. Lewis was right when he talked about how we long for food, we have an appetite, and there is food. We long for sex, and there is sex out there. We long for eternity, and most likely there is eternity out there. So that jives with me, that works for me. I think for me also, the emotional side of Christianity and the cultural side, tremendously rational. I was just in L.A., I just got back from L.A. on a, on a popular podcast. I, I, I read this quote because I think it's very powerful from one of my favorite writers, He's an atheist, oddly enough. And he said to Kenyon College, I won't, I won't say who it is, but, well, yeah, well, David Foster Wallace. And the compelling reason for maybe choosing some sort of God or spirituality, he says, because we all worship something. This is an atheist saying. He's one of the most brilliant atheists, I think, in the last 50 years. Unfortunately, he hung himself. But he said, is that pretty much anything else you worship will eat you alive? If you worship money and things, if they are where you tap, real meaning in life, then you will never have enough. Never feel you have enough. Worship your body and beauty and sexual allure and you will always feel ugly. And when the time and age start showing, you will die a million deaths before they finally grieve you. Worship power, you will end up feeling weak and afraid and you will need ever more power over others to numb you to your own fear. Worship your intellect, being seen as smart, you will end up feeling stupid, a fraud, always on the verge of being found out. But the insidious thing about these forms of worship is they're unconscious. They are default settings. So everybody worships. The only choice we get is what to worship. And the compelling reason for maybe choosing, maybe choosing some sort of God or spirituality thing to worship is that pretty much anything else you worship is going to eat you alive. And it's a subconscious matter. I see it all the time as a psychotherapist in my office. I, I'm not too long ago had a brilliant artist I was counseling and she was worshiping her art. She ended up in a psych facility, unable to get out because her depression was so high. And I said, you probably want to change that worship into something eternal, something, something outside of you. Uh, I've also seen this in Viktor Frankl's writings, obviously the great psychiatrist who lived through the prisoner of war camps there in Nazi Germany. He said, those who didn't worship something outside of the camp, something eternal, shriveled up and died, turned each other in, became nasty and brutish. The only ones who had a level of buoyancy and happiness and joy, even within the death camps, were those who had some type of God. So that, that's the emotional side of it. And then the real intellectual piece is the gospel reliability. I mean, nine observers, witnesses, put their memories to writing. You, you know, you have 27 different documents in the New Testament that were written on 27 different scrolls by nine of these different writers or over 20 to 50 years about. And now they've been collected into one book. And that's the New Testament. You know, 5,800 handwritten Greek manuscripts, 9,000 manuscripts in other languages. Now, Homer, we only get 643. Humran scrolls, huge discovery in the 1900s, gigantic. 500 books worth. You know, you have obviously Isaiah, most of Isaiah on a fragment, but then you have fragments of every single book in the Old Testament. Gigantic in terms of the reliability of the Bible as a whole. You get early testimony. I, I'm, my biggest piece of early testimony would be Paul, 1 Corinthians 15, 3 through 8. 
Uh, he also talks about in Philippians 2, but I would go first for Corinthians 15, 3 through 8 is number one, because what is passed down? What has been passed down to him? And I would say the weeks, weeks after Jesus' resurrection, we have the immediate preaching of what occurred with the resurrection, which is the gospel. That's weeks. That's the scholarship that I go by. Um, so I went his testimony multiple independent sources so you have coherence and dissimilarity within it that's pay dirt for historians you know it's not just wild contradictions no there's dissimilarities and there needs to be One or, or there's some type of collusion eyewitnesses are trustworthy i would say like why would they lie doesn't make any sense women for example trustworthy even though josephus would say that's ridiculous they're an untrustworthy so that's enemy attestation corroborating evidence from archaeology you know other writers there's the pool of salome Bethesda, on and on. We'll get into that later. But the enemy attestation is also, you know, Romans, Jews. Let's just say the disciples stole the body. And that was a rumor that spread for a long time. Embarrassing details. Why would they add this about Peter and the women? Doesn't make any sense why they would add that. So maybe these disciples, these gospel writers, were just brilliant. Brilliant fishermen. And magically, they were able to pull off this amazing stunt. Maybe, maybe. I'm not totally against that idea. I, I, I hold myself to be agnostic and at times. And so, but that that's hard for me to get behind. Um, that's time there. How much time? Uh, that's time right there. That's time. Oh, that's time, okay. All right. Well, thank you, uh, Stuart. If that's all uh, there, uh, we'll uh, thank you for your opening statement there. And I, I just want to remind everybody, if you didn't see the promo on the intro while you were all listening to me do my guitar, sto my guitar solo work, uh, we're going to be having a live in-person debate. So that's coming up on September 16th. It's going to be live in Houston, Texas. So we got uh, a link in the description for those tickets. Uh, and, and what's that? Oh. We're seeing double. Look, Aaron's there twice now. So uh, with Aaron's face on the screen two times, we're going to hand it over to Aaron for his introductory statement. And the floor is all yours. I want to thank Stuart for bringing me into two debates and yet not bringing me into one. Because as you look at the title of this video, it is, uh, is Christianity true? And that's the one I thought we were going to have. But Stuart decided that we were going to have a debate on, is Christianity rational? But uh, fortunately, he didn't bring an argument for that either. So uh, what, what, what he did do was uh, let me know how much he does not know about atheism. First of all, uh, what is materialism? Materialism is, is, is we, bo we both accept that there is this material universe. I think we both accept that there's a material universe. I don't also assume a magical alternative reality like Stuart does. So materialism is not assuming another reality that is not indicated. Um, he mentioned that he said that chemicals don't reason. Uh, I would say that only chemicals reason, uh, that the only thing that we can show in the universe that reasons are chemicals. And the, the other thing about how he said that atheism, the worldview of atheism is that nothing exploded and all of that, except that, we don't believe there was ever nothing. Not even Lawrence Krauss believes that. I've had the, the opportunity to talk to a number of cosmologists, cosmogonists, even in uh, models of cosmogony that have a singularity, the singularity is eternal, never created. There was never a time when there was just nothing, and the Big Bang is not an explosion. Uh, also, science doesn't prove math because math and science are called math and science because they're two different things. So math has proofs. Science doesn't. Science doesn't have to prove anything. It's not about that. It's about showing what is or is not supported by the evidence. Uh, there, we have objective morality. I could argue if we want to have a whole separate debate on that about uh, objective morality where Christianity can't have objective morality because all you do is all you have is the subjective opinion of whoever's pr pretending to speak for God's subjective opinion. But if you have an actual reason why we, you know, a, a, a series of uh, criteria that we all agree on, how do we determine whether something is moral or immoral, then we can use that to judge your Bible and your God and determine that he is not moral. Uh, there's no such thing in, as destiny, and if there was, that would, that would be yet another thing that would contradict free will. 
Uh, we do not all worship something. I don't worship anything. And there's no other atheist who speaks for me, by the way. And I don't think I speak for anybody else. I can only speak for my own worldview or opinion. But so far as I know, I, th I think I'm in the majority position on this, that we don't all worship any, uh, something. Uh, and then uh, I, my, one of my problems, one of my many problems with Christianity would be the absence of independent sources. All you have are are anonymous claims. Uh, there's no corroborating evidence. There's really no evidence of any kind. So going to the argument that I thought I was coming here for, the one that was pitched to me, the one that is in fact advertised on the video, uh, is Christianity true? And the simple answer is, of course not. Uh, Christianity is the notion that there is a God and that we have to believe that or we'll be mercilessly and savagely tortured forever and ever and ever, relentlessly for all eternity, if we don't believe, by a God who supposedly loves us and yet denies us any rational indication of his existence. If God existed, then it would be his fault that we have all this evidence against him, and he would have had to have created that, all that evidence if he was real. He would have had to have created it to deceive us just so that he can judge us for what he did to us. And then worse than that, Christianity has the specific requirement that we are to break the very first commandment by worshiping Jesus as God placed ahead of the Jewish father God, Jehovah, such that anyone who dedicates their life to some other version of God, say as a Sikh or a Hindu or a, a Zoroastrian or a Muslim, will, despite all their sacrifice and, and all that they've, they've given up in devotion to God, they will be sent to hell because they didn't declare Jesus as their Savior. So all their piety and whatever they sacrificed is, and, and all their dedication is meaningless. Uh, we have to be forgiven for having fallen victim to God's own crime against us when he set and baited the trap in the Garden of Eden and punished a couple who couldn't be held culpable because God created them without knowing right from wrong and set the conditions such that our failure was inevitable. And then he acted like he was surprised. And the reason that Jesus was supposed to die on the cross was to atone for our discovery of forbidden knowledge. So Christianity is largely a retelling of the Greek myth where Prometheus is bound to a rock to atone for men discovering the secret of fire that made them like unto gods. But none of that ever happened anyway. We know that Adam and Eve are genetically impossible, that the story of, gar of the Garden of Eden is just a fable with a moral, one whose only possible truth is only a metaphor and a poor one at that. And we know for certain that the, the Tower of Babel, the global flood of Noah's Ark, the Exodus, Jonah and the whale, and so many other stories in the Bible are not true and did not happen. If those stories were true, then God wants to blame us for everything he did. But fortunately, we know those stories are not true. There's nothing to forgive us for, and there is no reason to base forgiveness on what or whether someone believes. We know it's not a moral issue. Morality in, in Christian theology is irrelevant because it doesn't matter how evil you are. All, all can be forgiven if you but believe. But if you don't believe, then it doesn't matter how good you are because the only sin that will not be forgiven is the sin of disbelief. Thus, morality is irrelevant and gullibility is the sole criteria for redemption. And then if we're only, do I have any time left? How yeah, time do I have you left? still have three and a half minutes, a little extra. Three and a half minutes. Well, let me say, let's just go with, 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 with Jesus being the center of everything. So he's, he's a faith healer who a, a, a self-professed faith healer and scam artist who actually didn't know anything. He said that we could break the Jewish tradition of washing our hands because he said that whatever goes into a man's mouth will not corrupt him. It's what comes out of his mouth because Jesus apparently didn't know anything about nutrition or drugs or poisons or contaminants. Instead, he believed in the power of magic words. He was a mystic who had no idea what caused the maladies that he pretended to cure. He thought they were caused by demons. This is not the guy you want to ask medical advice from. Uh, he and his disciples were faith healers, self-proclaimed self -proclaimed exorcists, and no different than the fraud still running those scam seminars today. He didn't know what the smallest seeds were, even according to contemporary farmers whom he could have just asked. He didn't know when fig season was. And the argument that I hear now that this story isn't real, that it was a later interpolation just for the symbolism, does not help the Christian position. Jesus didn't know that the earth 
was round. I mean, you got one story where the devil takes him up on a high mountain and shows him all the kingdoms of the earth, which is impossible on a globe. But then Jesus says he doesn't know exactly when his return might be. He says he hopes that it'll be during that it won't be during winter, which shows that either Jesus didn't know that there's a southern hemisphere or he didn't. He was only here for the Jews anyway, which he actually said, by the way. You, you just, hey, stop. Stop that. You're making noise. Knock it off. So, sorry, I have a puppy. It's all good. So he told his disciples not to go among the Gentiles or enter any town of the Samaritans, but instead to preach only to the Jews. And Jesus said, truly, I tell you that you will not finish going through the towns of Israel before the Son of Man comes. <laughs> well, They've been through every town a long time ago, and your boy ain't showed up. Uh, Jesus said that some, not all, but some of the disciples standing with him would not even taste to death until they saw Jesus seated at the right hand of power and coming in the clouds of heaven. But all those people that he said that to died like 1900 years ago, at minimum. Your boy is late. You've been stood up. He ain't coming. Do we have any time left? Yeah, you still have a whole minute about. <laughs> okay, and then the values that, that Stuart mentioned. I mean, Christian values means no more than intolerance of other people's religious perspectives. Christian family values simply means hatred of gays and anybody who's on, who's on the spectrum of genderqueer. And Christian moral values means that excessive violence is perfectly fine whenever you're violating somebody else's rights. The level of hypocrisy, I mean, Christianity is all about denying responsibility. You don't actually have to help somebody. You can just literally wish upon a star that they'll get the help that they need somehow. Or, and, and you don't have to be responsible for anything you've done because there's no, you don't have to, to atone for anything you've done wrong because you could just pretend that your magic imaginary friend has forgiven you. And because, of course, he has. He's you. And then you don't, you don't have to be responsible for the environment either because you can just make up the excuse that any minute now, Jesus will come back and roast anything, everything anyway. So it doesn't matter that I don't do anything. So denial of responsibility. There's no truth to Christianity ever at all, period. Nothing, nada. Uh, there, and here's here's a big one. This is kind of important. We don't have souls. Ten seconds. I've talked to a whole bunch of, of neurophilosophers and, and neuroscientists, and there, there is no support for mind-body dualism at all, period. Not, not in neuroscience, not even in philosophy. We don't have souls. We are our bodies. Chemicals are the only things that reason. And I'll, I'll just let it go there. Awesome. Well, thank you so much, Aaron, for your opening statement there and your opening statement from you as well, Stuart. Just want to remind everybody here at Modern Day Debate, we are a neutral platform and we will host debates on science, religion, politics, you name it, hit us up. Uh, we're excited to have this open discussion. So let's kick it off. Uh, over to you, Stuart, uh, uh, to kick us into our open discussion. And thanks for being here, fellas. Hit that like while you're at it, people. It's a good idea. You're on mute right now. Okay, Stuart. so... There you are. I like that list a lot, and I'm going to be honest. I'm honest in saying that. I am going to start with reliability of the Gospels I went to, and you were saying no sources when I gave nine. I didn't get to my resurrection piece, which there's an his incredible historical background for the resurrection itself. I didn't say you, you had no that. sources. I said they were anonymous. Oh, anonymous. I know. When I hear that, I don't, I don't understand that because – who with, wrote them? With the age, with the age of where they are placed, the names fit perfectly, and if we would actually have a better idea of the names, we would hold them to be more credible than even the dates. But we all hold the dates to be credible at where they're at. So how come you think they're anonymous? Well, because we we don't have their names, and because not the the the, the dates would be the closest thing to credible if there was an agreement on the dates. But even that, saying, the gospel even that writers? is questionable. Matthew Mark I had the advantage John. of you know, when I started doing my blasphemers Bible study you know, and started getting in with uh, some people with some scholarship. And, and I, I've had the advantage of speaking to a number of biblical scholars on this topic. And so I was surprised at how weak the Bible actually is. I, did, I was surprised to find out that it was worse off than I thought. And what's interesting about that is I've had the exact opposite experience with atheists like Tom Holland the great historian over at Oxford. I loved him in Spider-Man. <laughs> I'm told I look like him, actually, which is the biggest compliment I've, I've gotten this year. And so the impact of the Bible worldwide is what all these atheistic thinkers 
I, I'm listening to them say that, you know, and then they go on and debate the AC Graylings of the world who, who hate them saying that. But it's fascinating that it's an atheist versus atheist. I guess Tom Holland might be an agnostic. But this gets at, I'm glad you said that, because this, this, this goes right into what you finished there in your comments. You know, I've got a lot on the resurrection that we could go to because because I do know that this debate was on is Christianity true? And I'm glad you you fixed my you caught my rationality there. But why when you state something like you just stated, there's no truth to Christianity ever at all. Why does a guy like Bart Ehrman last month come out and say that, yes, compassion as an idea more than mm -hmm. just a feeling came about in this world? through Christianity and Jesus Christ himself. Wait, wait, but, wait. Bart Ehrman doesn't realize that, that compassion predates Christianity? No, his whole point was that compassion was a ridiculous idea in the world, specifically the Roman Empire, pre-Jesus, because it was all about those who are in power had dominance, and it was considered grave weakness by the Greeks and the Romans to actually say, hey, your God is going to become a slave, a servant, and die down here, I and mean, he's going to become human. Yeah. And so I that's why speak. Bart Ehrman, the strong atheist, I can't speak to whatever one of those famous Ehrman. would say, he would say, yes. We'll just give you a 10 I can't speak to whatever Ehrman was talking about in that moment. I mean, if we want to isolate it to the Romans, yeah, I've read stuff from the Romans that was hugely prejudiced, uh, stuff that I adamantly disagree with. But you can't say that Christianity came from, or excuse me, that, that compassion came from Christianity when it predates Christianity, and not just in the Middle East, but in the Orient as well. So we have a lot of compassionate writers from long before the time of Jesus. So that 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 comment just doesn't make any sense at all. He was referring more to the level of compassion because we, you and I have talked about this, I believe, before. When I I agree, there's places in the in the Gita. That obviously the golden rule spans across all religions, but mm -hmm. and there's places in the Gita that talk about you know being friend to your neighbor. I don't know how the Gita and would then define secular neighbor. philosophers in, in but, the fourth century through the first century. But hold on, but there was nothing anywhere remotely close to Jesus Christ saying to die for your enemies. Like I want to see that. So okay. that's why it's such a radical take on compassion that spread through Christianity. That's why Bart Ehrman would agree on this with a Christian. And so, so and I'm not saying this to point that Christianity is true. The reason yeah, why and I'm I wouldn't say that Chris, that Chris, uh, that, that Jesus was compassionate either. No, I mean, there, there's a number of places where Jesus just straight up lies saying that everyone who, who asked for anything will get it. And that if you simply, he was a mystic, you know, he believed that, that, it, that the power of positive thought would change reality. So if you make believe hard enough, you could make a mountain jump into the sea. You just had to believe, believe, believe. And he said that if you just make believe hard enough, then his uh, his disciples should be able to perform better miracles than he did. And and then his, uh, of course, which they didn't. And this specifically says that uh, the faithful will be able to exercise demons and speak in new tongues and survive drinking poison or you know, being bitten by venomous snakes. When the reality is that snake handlers still die when they get bit, faith healing doesn't work, demons are not real, and no two people who speak in new tongues can actually understand each other because it's not an actual language, it's gibberish. And that's all that is. And then in Matthew 10, where Jesus says, you know, don't, don't, don't suppose that I came to bring peace but a sword, Right. Uh, he's, he says that uh, he's come to turn a man against his father and a daughter against his mother or her mother and a daughter in law against her mother in law. And a man's enemies will be the members of his own household because he's a cult leader. And so he's trying to divide people over their misplaced faith in him. And then, you know, whoever does not pick up the cross is not worthy of me. Whoever finds their uh, whoever uh, does not hate their their uh, whoever loves their son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me and then so here's a guy who one guy, believes in demons right and this is the same chapter where he promised that he would be that he would return during his disciples lifetime and then in luke uh, 14 he continues his rant saying that you can't be one of his disciples unless you hate your mother and your father and your brother and your sister and your wife and even your own life and of course, this directly contradicts John 3.15 and 4.20, but then the Bible contradicts itself constantly. So here's this guy that has, for no reason at all, doesn't know Dick about Jack, has 
has just erected himself as some kind of you know faith healer cult leader he's the same kind of bullshit scam artist we still have running seminars today and he's made himself the center of this religion and yet how odd this this uh cult leader who came from absolutely nothing as in like a feeding trough nothing how odd that he turns out to be more famous with more biographies written about him than the roman emperor of the time through no credit of his own sure because this was this was odd no less people though. who the people who supposedly follow him now do exactly the opposite of everything he taught he was a renunciate he he was advocating that no rich person could get into heaven that you're supposed to sell all your clothes and give them to the poor oh and pay your taxes he advocated he argued again basically against the entire republican party today which is a surprising thing and then um except I, on abortion I, and sexuality and I, i'm sorry what except on abortion and sexuality but the others you're right well uh, numbers five took care of that so i mean we're that's already having uh, and and uh also some jewish scriptures we also we have advocation of of abortions with god's direct involvement and assistance so Wait, Jesus i just didn't hold on to... Aaron. what see i loved all the topics you brought up actually i'm gonna be honest you brought up my favorite topics out of any debate I've ever had on this show in terms of the amount you brought up and just how interesting they were. But then the slip was showing at the end here. I'm going to go back to no truth to Christianity ever True. at all. So you're yep. saying Jesus. And I stand by that. Okay. So you're saying all values are false. All, all Jesus, his life, perhaps. Was, I did not say that all values are false. Sources, no I did not say that all values are false. I said there's no truth to Christianity. Like there's no truth to any religion. All right, so let's, let's, let's there is nothing there. There's nothing that any religion can show that they got more right than all the other religions. Nothing. Okay. That's a and all of them together can't even show that there's a there there. The whole, all of religions combined can't show that there's a supernatural at all. A supernatural at all? Right. Well, let's just go over that then real quickly. Yeah, so we're going to go through the standard run of things I've seen a thousand times, and you're going to pretend as if this is your gameplay. Okay. Well, all right, fine. I'll just I'll just do fact checking then on on everything okay. you said, because if you don't want to go all my because the, the resurrection evidence has been updated very recently, but what you said on faith was just malarkey. I didn't say I don't say anything on faith. Oh, you and said nothing I'll I said was malarkey. Said faith, you said faith is what is fully determined. God is is based off of your faith, some type of wish fulfillment, and whether you connect to it or not, then you're gonna go to hell if you don't if you don't really connect with it. And so I that think that is uh, I, I don't think that's what I said at all. You are judged on whether you believe in Christianity. You're and you're given a completely binary sentence, which is utterly ridiculous. I don't know what you get. You get the impossible prom the, the impossible promise of a posthumous reward for believers, and then non believers. Are, are faced with the threat of a fate worse than death that is so far extreme and so over the top in both directions that it negates itself. There is no way that an actual considerate or the, a, the being at all of any kind of superior intelligence would allow there to be a hell. It certainly wouldn't have a judgment of the type that you're talking about, where it's extremely binary. What would be the opposite of supreme goodness then, if it's a complete attrition of it? What would it be? Why would I need an opposite of supreme goodness? Because if God is supreme goodness, or let's just say a place... But let's lo okay, but he, your God is not, let's but let's pretend just, for a moment that it is. Yeah. Why would I need to, to come up with a, a, an opposite for well, that? You don't need to. You don't need to. I'm just saying the opposite of would be what? The opposite your God. Would be what? That's the, why The God eternal, would, merciless I'll, I'll torture hell. in hell, that would be the exact opposite of your God. That's why hell was the first thing that I had to let go of even as a young Christian, because I realized that hell was inconsistent with God. But there's so much eisegesis going here that I just want to do a little exegesis. And one of them being just here for the Jews, for example. Then you got to explain the Good Samaritan. Why is a Samaritan raised up? You got to explain the Samaritan, the woman at the well in John chapter four. There is no way you can set up a case that Jesus was just here for the Jews. The Jews were the chosen people in the Old Testament. Well, he did say that over again, over and over again. Yes, he did. What's that? He did say that over and over again, yes. That he was just here for the Jews. And yes, then... he actually said that a number of times. 
Then all these other examples were given, especially in the book of Revelation, about, and then every tribe and nation in Galatians, and then all these examples of welcoming the Samaritans. So what, is he just contradicting himself completely? I would he, guess so, yes. Because that happens a lot in the Bible, as you've noticed, I'm sure. No, I think it's beautifully put in, in order to not see contradictions, but a level of tension that makes you actually look deeper. He, he does not speak in total black and white, nor is the Bible spoken completely in black and white. And that's what I'm talking okay, about. Okay, so you're, you're denying the heaven and hell option. Gospels, the beauty of the historicity of the Gospels is, again, any good historian or literalist would talk, literaryist, would talk about the importance of the tension, not contradiction, but the tension in, in reporting and writing. I think the only possible beauty in the Gospels is that they're not historical. How do we know that? Well, because, one, they're not part of history. They're not They're not uh, backed by any historian. Wait, Tom I'm Holland just backed it. Tom Holland, Andy Murray. Contemporary historians, again, Doug going back to Bart Ehrman. Gordon Peterson. Bart Ehrman. Bart Ehrman argues that there was a historical Jesus, just but a that Jesus there, was not a um, historical character because he's not recognized by any contemporary historian, not one. I don't want to cut anybody off, but uh, unfortunately, it is the case that uh, when you do speak over Stuart, his audio is cutting out completely. So those little nuances between the open discussion are getting a little bit lost on the Internet trail. So uh, just if we could mitigate a few of the interruptions, that would be okay, just so that uh, it's not as open as what we'd like it to be. But that's okay. If Stuart wants to challenge me that there is truth to creationism, excuse me, that, that there is truth to Christianity, making a distinction there. He's welcome to show me what that truth is. Truth to Christianity. Is that what you said? Yeah. I mean, that's the that's the debate, right? That's exactly what the debate is. So, so show me show Christ me truth of Christianity. Show me show me something that Christianity teaches that uh, apart from any other religion that is actually true. Okay. Okay. Wait a second. Do, are you asking for me to? to teach you something on Jesus's teachings that's true, or am I giving evidence here for like the reliability of the Gospels and resurrection? No, yeah, okay, so if we were talking- I will go I by you. Up, I feel like- I was bringing up Hinduism, and I was gonna bring up something that Hinduism teaches that is actually true, and, it's, and, and therefore, this is the truth of Hinduism. This shows that Hinduism is true. Yeah, that, that I would I would be giving some kind of uh, I'd be giving evidence for the, the, the type of theology that they're that they're talking about. I would be able to show that there is a there there. I, you, you can't do that. That's why you used the opening arguments that you did, because they all they all demonstrate that you already know we can't go there. No, no. I hear so many secularists say things like agreeing with the basic facts on the resurrection, for example. That there was a well-known tomb of Joseph of Arimathea, that women whose testimony we've thrown out of court of law were the first eyewitnesses, that even Joseph, Josephus said that, that the disciples had some type of experience, and that then people like Paul and James were converted. But even before that, there was an incredible yep. historical context with people like Zutonius, Celsus, Josephus. All of these, or at least 10 of them, historical non-Christian writers who weren't just talking about Jesus existing and dying on a cross, but they were even setting up that that Jesus was a miracle worker. So you got to explain that one. If we're just going to toss out Jesus is a miracle worker because his disciples said so, fine. But then you got you got to talk to me about the 10. Then you have them talking about the Christians. talk to you about the what? Christians started worshiping on a third day. Why I did they talk to you about the what? I think he missed you what you about said there, too. The miracle so. worker. My confusion there is, then why were there so many secular historians and emperors and eyewitnesses saying that he was a miracle worker? You mean, why were there no eyewitnesses? What do you mean? What? Why, what you why mean? was there not one eyewitness? Why would they say that? Why would Josephus... Why, why would who say that? Why would Josephus, Suetonius, and Celsus all say that he was a miracle worker? Okay. So lots of people doing the little bit of magic tricks, like faith healers still do today. I don't have a problem with that, but we don't have eyewitnesses. We have claims of eyewitnesses. We have claims that 500 people saw this. We don't have a single testimony from any one of those 500. We don't have 500 testimonies. We just have a single claim that 500 anonymous people saw this. Matthew, Mark, John, Paul, James. And all anonymous, those are not the authors of those Gospels. How do you know that? Because one, they're not identified as that. We just, they just, they're somebody not... arbitrarily put names on that. 
They're not, they're not written from the first person perspective, identifying the authors in that case. So there's no reason to associate other than the, the fact that tradition has put those names on it. Well, the full burden of proof is on you for that one. Okay. I just I, gave it. I don't, I, that did not sound sufficient to get out from underneath. Okay. It. So we have no reason to believe that those are the names that belong there. Even Bart Ehrman, even though, okay. he, even though he makes that point, he does not hold solidly to that point. Do, does he allow that maybe, maybe Luke was actually the author of Luke? Maybe. Mm -hmm. But Matthew and Mark, no. So we have we have a hard maybe on Luke, maybe. Hard no on Mark and Luke, oh, on Mark and Matthew, and then John, fuck no. That we got a completely different story on John. We have a propagandist writing an entirely different tale in the case of John. Okay, so I don't and again. We have to look at the whole logic of it. We know Adam and Eve didn't happen. We know that none of the original sin thing happened. We know that the, at, at the, most of the things that Jesus is teaching for, they're all wrong. He got all of that wrong. The, the, the supernatural aspect is all wrong. That The moral judgment of it for you know the heaven and hell aspect, all of that is wrong. So what's not wrong? What's actually true? Well, I'm still stuck on these gospel writers because, again, the burden of proof is on you, and you, I don't think you've given me a good enough evidence to believe that it was not those four. Second, okay, so the experts agree. Oh, we just so, had this. So the experts so, agree that maybe. I would they be not hard? Yes, but wait, maybe. And tell me, maybe well, Luke was written by Luke. Hold on a second. There's so two. familiar. Matthew and Mark were not written by Matthew and Mark, and neither was John. Why were they so familiar with things like botany? You know, with Luke talking about, for example... Oh, you mean Jesus getting the wrong... Well, the the size of the right? seeds wrong and uh, the, 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 I would, uh, the date of figs wrong? Familiarity. Just, uh, one second there, Aaron. We'll let uh, Stuart uh, expound on what he's thinking okay. there just for a second. Just because his audio is cutting out. My uh, audio always talk. goes... I, I noticed that for all these debates. Are the cards... Is the deck stacked against me here, Ryan? You need to get one of these Well, I should fancy, not look fancy. at your chat. These people hate me. <laughs> they lie about me every other post. Don't be lying about our speakers in the chat. Give them lots yeah, of love. Yeah, tell me I chat. hate my father. All kinds of shit. You'd be amazed at the slander going on here. All well, of it wrong. Well, I'm going to pop in the there and I I get that him. I look like a, a Disney villain. Okay, fine. That doesn't mean I'm actually evil. Well, I'm going to pop in there right quick and just uh, mitigate the chat a little bit. Make sure you're being kind in there and your usual nice oh, they're selves, everybody. I'm, I'm just not even going to look at this because it's bad. Oh, no. <laughs> well, uh, just a reminder, everybody, to hit the like button. Uh, you know, regardless of what you're saying, haters be haters. We don't mind you. You know, no sweat off our back. You know, we'll move on without you. Uh, we still got uh, up to 30 minutes of open discussion, everybody. So make sure that you're sharing this out in those contentious spaces. You like to have those debates. And let's... Uh, keep it rolling fellas so let's pass it back to you Stuart. there and uh keep the conversation rolling all right let me get my verbosity out for one second then you respond i see the problem with your what you're positing right now is there's no nobody has brought a great case where they're like i am certain the gospel writers we got the names wrong everybody's like speculation i don't know if it really was them so my case for them actually being the correct ones were their names were on the documents from the very beginning. And so if you're going to trust even the narrative of the gospel, which Aaron, I don't think you do, I, you're, you're going to have to trust that if you actually trust the dating and the names. Now, I think the names obviously jive with the culture at the time. You know, you got obviously the names that they bring up all the time are Simon Peter, Joseph, Matthew. All those names are the names that were used. Then you have Bot I, I trust the gospel of Thomas probably more than I trust the other four. Yeah, well, the Gospel of Thomas is barely any any copies. Yeah, I, I realize that, but it's got the only wisdom from Jesus in it. <laughs> what was that? <laughs> when his disciples asked him what he thought about uh, about circumcision, and Jesus said that if, if God meant for us to be circumcised, we would have been born without foreskins. I'm like, that makes perfect sense. <laughs> I, I didn't know that passage. That, it's, that, is a, that is a bumper sticker right there. I like that. So... What so, is that, a factory recall? <laughs> <laughs> so so they get names right. Then they get botany right, the sycamore tree. How do they get botany right? And why is that relevant? They use things like the sycamore tree, for example, in Luke, Luke chapter 19 with Zacchaeus. He climbs up into the sycamore tree. Okay. Or the olive. Okay. 
for example, Garden of and, Gethsemane, connected the, and the relevance there. It's all it's all botany. So I'm just saying that they. So, knew. so Jesus getting the 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 date of figs wrong and the size of the smallest seed wrong. That's that's the the gospels getting botany right. Well, that's Jesus. I'm talking about the gospel writers right now. No, what? Cause you're right. What the fuck does Jesus know? <laughs> so. We're talking about looking for the truth of Christianity, right? So that there's a God and you have to believe in, in Jesus for whatever reason. And if you don't believe in Jesus, then it doesn't matter what you, how you dedicate your life. You're going to hell because there's a hell because God is a punk uh, and completely unjust and unrighteous judge. And you've got this eternal damnation either way, right? Because if you go to heaven, that's eternal damnation too. You just don't realize it the first day in the door. It'll take you a couple of days to realize that that's hell too. So where's the truth of Christianity? Where's the true part of Christianity? The true part, I would say, in terms of the teaching, is the brilliancy of if God, if there is a God, it would make a whole lot of sense for God to meet humanity in physical form. And punching all Doesn't a he already automatically do that with every creation? What do you mean? The only way I can view this is if I was a God, I would automatically feel, because he's tele telepathic, I would be able to feel that, that every paramecium, I would know what sensations they're going through. I would be able to sense every fucking thing. I wouldn't need to create some hippie based on what, you know, the image of the Borgias. And then and in order to forgive somebody for something they never did in the first place, which is another important point, that never happened. But even if it did happen, I would have the unconditional love that doesn't have conditions. I would be able to forgive without having my people have to do something unforgivable first. So you wouldn't have to kill Jesus to stay out of hell because I would be a good God, not even a great God, but I would be a better God than your God. I wouldn't allow there to be a hell because that's stupid. It's not you, possible to earn an eternal damnation. You it, you can't be bad enough. 10,000 Hitlers times squared. You you can't be bad enough to be worth hell. So then you disagree with David Foster Wallace then. When he says that Okay. Every, every, he can every, be wrong too. I don't care. Hell is here on earth and simply eternal hell is just that hell writ large because your hell on earth here is the imposter syndrome that you have to live with when you worship something like your looks or your job. I don't worship anything, remember? What's that? I don't worship anything. It was one of the many things you got wrong when you tried to describe atheism. I know you hate the word because you hate everything Christian. The only thing I hate is injustice. My favorite part about you is your emotional bias, which I like. I don't have an emotional bias. I you know, don't hate anything either, except for injustice. That includes lies, and that's what pits me against religion. Well, here. Okay, so God, let's go back to your original question, because it's a good one. Let's take, for example, okay, God meets us in different ways, and you would say no. I have had a... I, I just said yes. I just said that... I, that, I then, for example, I, I think... God would, would know everything that we know, every pain that we feel. God would know all of it. How do you know he doesn't? Why would you have to do, as you said where he creates his himself as his son. Oh, by the way, I need to show people this shirt. Are you there, God? It's me, you. <laughs> I, it just that's, that's how ridiculous Christ, uh, Christianity is. <clears throat> and I sidetracked myself. Remind me, where were we? Send one of those to Ryan. I think Ryan wants one. Okay. <laughs> me? No, no, I'm just, I'm just hanging out. Uh, I thought a little bit I, Ryan. No, no. Yeah, so why would God have Sorry. to create his son stupid idea to to then have to sacrifice his son the idea that he ever demanded to sacrifice at all again stupid again evidence against god so that he could forgive us when he could have just forgiven us anyway and it was entirely his fault everything that went on in the fable of the garden he did that he did and it was all wrong but you know it doesn't matter because it didn't happen so no truth no, no original sin, no Adam and Eve, no Tower of Babel, no global flood of Noah's Ark, no Exodus, no Jonah and a whale. None of that. None of that happened. So even if there was a Jesus, what do you got? You got a first century faith healer. You've got the Kenneth Copeland of the first century. Big fucking deal. 
So Jesus is trying to come up with his 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 first century version of the citation jet while telling everybody else that they have to sell all their clothes and go into the poor house so that they can support the poor. Now, maybe they're donating their money to Jesus. I don't know how he's funding his operation. I remember that um, that uh, uh, um, how what was it? Bobby Tilton here in Dallas, a big mega preacher. He was donating all of this money to a charity, a boys charity. Uh, for orphans in Haiti, which here's a surprise. I know you don't see this coming. It was confirmed that 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 orphanage never existed. And the reason it was in Haiti was so that he could fund the money out, that he was getting hundreds of millions of dollars from people and funding it out supposedly to charity. Now, I don't know that Jesus was doing that, but it sounds like the same kind of scam. Well, then I don't know why in the world you have the Mother Teresa. Don't you start that Mother Teresa line on me. She Did I have to say a word? I don't know. She you was already a... realized what a bad argument that is. It really hurts my feelings when anybody speaks ill of Mother Teresa. My wife works in the Mother Teresa home, cutting a lot of toenails. But for me, it's the whole piece on your original question, if there is a God, how would he meet us? And I gave one example of he became human here on this earth. Which he didn't need to do. I am very pro psilocybin and DMT and a lot of these drugs because okay. these have shown that 40% of hard atheists became theists after these drug trips. So I think that that's another way that God meets us. Wait, wait. I, I one, one of the things that really impresses me about talking to believers is the citations of statistics that can't be backed up and any claim of fact. Look it up. Never, never backed up. I, I was a couple of weeks ago, I was I was in Washington State protesting Oh, what the fuck is his name? The blonde boy who, who claimed that he went to uh, to 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 Satan Con and converted ninety eight Satanists to Jesus, but he couldn't come up with name one, not one person. He had a handful of pictures that he took with people for people who just were polite enough to pose for pictures with him, and were Satanists before they went there and are Satanists still. So we got this guy lying, right? Lie, lie, lie. He said that the, the twenty eight that the, the the twenty Satanists had run away when there's forty of us still standing there at the end of the day. So lie, lie, lie. That's what I get. Christianity, nothing but lies. Can you show me something that isn't just another stupid lie? Sure. Statistically, Christians give away the most. Statistically, okay. statistically, according to multiple op-ed writers at the New York Times right now who went down to Africa, they said. They had the same view as you, and they said if Africa didn't have Christians, the AIDS epidemic would be off the charts. It's the same. that Christians are on the front lines. They're the main ones pushing for anti-sex trafficking right okay, now. So Hogan, what's, what's the largest I, denomination of Christianity? There's, this is not – we can have that debate in terms of – No, no, no. Wait, I, I'm, I ask, I'm just asking a question. What is the largest denomination of Christianity? Well, hold on to that one, Stuart, and Got let's it. wrap up your point. Wait, Ryan, I didn't hear you. Oh, I said, uh, hold wants, on to his he question. Doesn't and wrap up your point, he doesn't want me to speak. He wants you to finish. <laughs> it's, no, it's okay. I want you to ask the question. I just wanted to make sure you wrapped up your point there. I can't remember my point, but I'll, I'll just finish a previous point. To the question. Which, <laughs> so God meets us through DMT and psilocybin and marijuana. God, God only exists in those forms. Son here to this planet in human form to physically connect with us. God is now, statistically, I have friends who are on the mission field in Muslim territories who all say that thousands of Muslims are becoming Christians because they're having dreams where they're meeting Christ. God comes to us via... And I'm going to challenge you on that one, too, because there's no way you're going to be able to verify that. Of inmates, of inmates who are across the country and all the Christian rescue missions that are all Christian-based, the Oxford group, based obviously AA, some of those are non-Christian now. All of these are meeting God as a, at least, at least, not as a Christian God, but as a higher power to get outside of self in order to have a relationship with him where they worship something other than the finite, and by doing so, they get healthy. So that's a few ways that God meets us, I think, in, and it makes sense. You know, a lot okay. of our... Towards... So I'm going to say that most of what you just said is indefensible bullshit. Yes, I agree. Yeah. Now, when you said that Christians give more than most people, I'll concede that one because Christians are the largest demographic. If you include the largest body of Christians, 
But then what is the largest denomination of Christians? That's Catholics. There's slightly over half of all Christians collectively are Catholics. Decreasing. What's that? They're decreasing greatly, but yes, they will Christianity always... Christianity as a whole is decreasing greatly. Yeah. But regardless, Catholicism is still over half of all Christians are Catholics. Agreed? It depends if you call Catholics Christians, because so many people don't consider Catholics. Okay, so if Catholics are not Christian, then Christians are the fourth largest religion. Islam is the dominant faith, followed by Catholicism. On some charts, it may be followed by Hinduism, because Catholics and Hindus are very close to the second place position. And then the fourth place would be Protestant Christianity. So if you if you eliminate Christ, uh, catholics well then you're you're in a in a very minority position if you maintain the largest denomination of christianity being catholics let's not forget that pope benedict who i prefer to call darth ratzinger went into went went into africa arguing that the use of condoms causes aids he said that this is the leader of the largest denomination of Christianity. And you want to say that if, if it wasn't for Christianity, you know, if, 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 the, 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 the AIDS epidemic would have been widespread, right? Fuck! Because of Christianity, the AIDS epidemic was widespread across Africa. Because fucking Darth Ratzinger said that. Because well, he about- hates... What about all the marches right now by the atheists who are saying, we are here, we are queer, and we're coming for your children? I mean, I'd say there's some serious indoctrination going on here for these poor kids. We're coming for your children? Are you sure you didn't quote that off of Fox News? <laughs> I'm just saying. There's, there's I a- have marched in a gay pride march. I'm not gay, but I, you know, representing an atheist group, I have marched in a gay pride. I don't remember anybody saying we're coming for your children. No, Except- these are- except for the right. Christians who come to my door asking me, how can we best target, target that word, target children? Well, who would you rather meet in a back alley, a Christian or an atheist? Atheist, absolutely. Well, if it was you, because yeah. We, we know that the men in dresses molesting children are not the trans people. Hey, teachers are doing that more than priests are. And I'm not a... I. I do we have I, statistics for that, really? I mean, how many how many religious leaders do we have to find out we're actually not just doing it themselves, but we're covering up for other pedophiles as well? How many how many times do we have to have some homophobic leader of a you know family organization? Because all the religious groups that have the word family in it just means that they hate gays. So this doesn't decrease the credibility for Jesus Christ, though, does it? But we don't we don't start from we start from zero. There is still no credibility. We have a first century faith healer who was wrong about everything. That's what we start from. And then build up to what? We build up to the guy didn't know anything then, then died. Yeah. He said he was coming back while some of his apostles or some of his disciples and us would still be alive. He didn't. He failed. They're dead. He's 1900 years late. He didn't say in their lifetime. Yeah, he did. Some of you still, some of you standing here, some of you will not even taste of death before they see that, you know, the son of man coming at the right hand of power in the kingdom with the clouds and all that kind of shit. That was about the collapse of the temple, 70 AD. Didn't happen. They never saw Jesus returning in the clouds at the right hand of power. Never happened. What was promised did not occur. Do you honestly believe this whole piece on Jesus and faith and that it's if you just aren't smart enough, you can't grasp this faith, you're just going to hell? I mean, look at how he dealt with, for example, you know, the the man who was going, Jesus healed his son when the man said, I do believe, help my unbelief. Jesus doesn't scold him. Or, for example, encountering Peter. I also, I, I, I do believe that Jesus didn't actually revive somebody who was literally dead. Jesus what? I, I don't believe that Jesus revived anyone who was actually dead. Well, gotta... I believe that I believe that D- Jesus did the same kind of bullshit stick that we've seen Peter Popov do, that we've seen Bobby Tilton doing, and and all of these other faith healers where they where they 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 where they've shown how midgets grow and they they hire somebody to sit down in a wheelchair to wheel them on stage so that they can have them walk 
so they can make a good stage performance out of it. And then worse things, when you have somebody that's actually convinced that they that they've been healed and they can stand up out of their their wheelchair and they can stand for a moment and now oh yeah that's great now put her back in the chair and wheel her off stage and tell them that they don't need their medication and my friend james randy went to go visit one of these people who did this performance on stage and it was televised and he wanted to go see did she actually a week later did she actually not have to have her medication anymore and when he shows up they're wheeling her out in a gurney dead so religion versus Jesus Christ and the Christian faith. Religion versus there, Jesus Christ? No, J is there Jesus a Christ is, uh, is religion. No, no. You brought what's up... The, what's the world's dominant religion? Man, I do not believe that Jesus or Paul teaches me to go and handle snakes right now who will bite me and kill me. Do you think it's because I am just deflecting from certain passages in the Bible and I'm not actually reading in context or translating? You are ignoring certain passages that do clearly say that, yes. Honestly, don't believe that that's contextual. Okay. Well, this might I'm, be I'm not going to argue for the, 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 the literacy of Scripture. I will only say that nobody reads the Bible more literally than atheists because we don't need to make up any bullshit excuses for what for when it says something we can't allow it to mean. I wish I was an atheist, because that'd be yeah. so easy. How many times have I brought up, when people say, well, the Bible says this, and I say, no, it doesn't say that, and they say, yes, it does, I'm like, show me. Well, I can't show you. Well, that's the way it always is, isn't it? But if I say that the Bible says something, I can bloody well show you right exactly where it says that. And when they say, well, it doesn't say that, then I show them. And they say, well, that's not what it says, becomes, that's not what it means. And that's, I love that you do that, because they oftentimes go to another little priest and their little priest says, don't ask those questions, just listen to me. So and when that occurs, <laughs> then it's not their faith at all. And when that occurs, it's a total abuse of power. You and I agree, because that exactly happens. Somebody finds some horrible thing that the Bible really does say, they go and visit their priest with it, and the priest says, just don't ask those questions. Because Dickless ain't got no answer. Well, this might be a good time, everybody, uh, to... We got 15 minutes left uh, of the open discussion, so it might be a good time to focus uh, specifically on the resurrection uh, for the next, uh, you know, or, or try to. You know, you guys can meander all you want, but uh, it, we can focus on that just for the debate topic, and then we'll move into our Q&A, uh, and let's keep it rolling. Remember, everybody, to hit that like button. I hear if we pass 666 likes on a live stream, Bruce Dickinson will appear and sing the whole Number of the Beast album. It's just a wives' tale, but let's find out if it's true. Um, all right, let's I like how people guys. are criticizing me for not coming up with bullshit excuses when I read the scripture, that I just read it at, read what it says and take it that it says that. People are criticizing me for that in your chat. They're not they're not in my tribe, don't worry. All right, so the resurrection. Where did Paul get again what that he received, that received, that he probably received it? I'm so from my perspective, from Peter and James when he visited them in Jerusalem three years after his conversion. So you have that in Galatians 1.18. So most scholars believe that that testimony was part of that early creed that I referenced that dates right back to the resurrection itself. So eyewitness testimony within weeks, some would say months. So there's no time for there to be legend that goes about. And it, it obviously occurred, the resurrection, right in Jerusalem. So it would be so, so easy for both the Romans and the Jews, to say, yep, here's the body, this is ridiculous, this is a hoax, let's get on with it. So the resurrection hypothesis, without forcing it, I believe has totally explanatory scope and power, and it really couldn't be any better than, than what it is. I mean, R in like science, you know, if you think about, we've never seen a black hole and probably never will, or a quark or subatomic particles. There several now. Rings. But the reason, okay, just as an example, the reason why these things are positive is because we see certain effects so you posit a hypothetical theoretical causes that could result in these effects you, you do understand they've they've actually seen several black holes now that would <laughs> hold on don't get stuck in the black holes Got that it. would produce these kinds of effects so therefore even though we've never seen a black hole you know it's a good explanation profitable one on how we can get certain things so i would say in the same sense a historian could say posit god as a theoretical entity as the cause for the resurrection of jesus so Paul's the best source to support Jesus' resurrection. I've said that before. 
And these are creedal can sources. Just, can so, I just declare victory with that statement from you that Paul is your best evidence for the resurrection? Can I just win with that? Why? If that's the best you've got, why are we still talking about this? No, no, that's just one of nine. I gave nine. He's just yeah, the top yeah, dog you, you out of gave nine. one name. Don't you worry. Eight one more. One name, nine anonymous. Buckle up until Q&A. So <laughs> James, second, not being a follower brother, I mean, while he's alive, then he dies and becomes this martyr. He gets thrown from a balcony, and then poor James, he's dead, but they're still beating him to death, according to tradition, at, at the bottom in the dirt. And we get Pliny, Trajan, Suetonius, Josephus, talking about Jesus' brother was crucified. James, excuse me, James' brother was crucified. What are we going to do about this? He was a miracle worker. All of a sudden, now what I find is very interesting. And which which uh, which Jesus is this? The James, the brother of the, of the one that's anointed, because we have Jesus of Damnius and then Jesus Ben Ananias, and Christians will will point to both of those and say, "Hey, that's our guy." When neither one is, and we know that. And your chat is. I'm, I'm irritated at all the people who constantly accuse me of lying when I don't lie. And the reason I'm not religious is because. I don't lie, and religion is just a lie. That's a very Christian response. That's not a very Christian response. Why is it typical? That's then? a very that's a very Christian. You sound like a Christian when you're saying that with your righteous indignation. The, oh, that I'm a Christian because I said I don't lie. Yeah, because I can prove that what I said is justified. Yeah. Whereas when a Christian speaks, they just utter empty assertions as if that's a matter of fact. Well, sure, that goes on. I just think you're a goldfish swimming in a pond of these Christian values, and, and you don't realize... Christian all values that predated Christianity and that Christianity largely denies. No, the legal system was fully formed based off of the laws that were... Of, of the Vikings? Root system of the genuine Christian values. Yeah, but, but not of Christian That's values, right. not, not American laws. So I hate right. he's going wild right now. Yeah. Let's stay on the resurrection. Not based on Judeo Christian anything. This is key. This is this is the latest resurrection evidence. Tacitus talked about the third day as a day of worship that the Christians changed. And then he talked about how the movement stopped and then broke out again in Judea before mm -hmm. spreading Rome. How yeah, accurate. He, he was talking posthumously about a cult. Not the guy himself. These are non-Christian sources, right? Talking posthumously about a cult, not the man, not not uh, uh, contemporary historians. People later talking about the cult, not the guy. And it, it wouldn't matter if they were talking about the guy because we're not talking about Jesus. We're talking about Christianity. Why does it and, matter though? Why does okay. it? Okay, so so later. the facts don't matter. The theology doesn't matter. All right, you you tell me what matters. Why in the world, why in the world would that matter if they are enemies? They do not want Christianity to exist. If they are backing up the full narrative, even if it is fifty to hundred years later, that doesn't matter. They're saying this is the history that's been passed down, okay, well, and we're going to write nobody, it in our history books. Why does it matter whether his, whether Christianity exists? So you're saying that they were duped by the Christians then? No, that's not what I'm saying at all. I'm saying I, I asked why does you you made an assumption, yet another of many baseless and false assumptions that you have made. You made the assumption that that I'm thinking that somebody needs to say that Christianity doesn't exist. Why would they need Christianity not to exist? What does it matter? I'm not following. Right, I'm not following either because nothing you're saying about you know atheism is true. Nothing you're saying about my position is true. No, 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 no. I'm I'm just a loss of all pulling the out, nonsense you're saying. out of the here. resurrection topic right now, and you're pulling a quick one, and it's smart because it's. Getting I, I'm not pulling a quick one. Doing. I'm I'm genuinely confused by the bullshit you're slinging. It's not I your really don't know where you're coming from. Nervous, and I get okay. it. Walking we don't it. have souls, and that's a big problem for the current version of Christianity. Now, the original version of Christianity, where we're all supposed to be walking undead some way, maybe. But but right now, we know we don't have souls. So that's a problem, because that means that the concept of God having, you know, taking our souls away and leaving our bodies behind, that's just factually void. Now, which, which version of Christianity are you arguing for? 
I'm arguing for the resurrection right now. I'm not talking about any denomination or souls. I'm not talking about denominations either. I'm talking about during Jesus's time when he said that you wouldn't die, you would just continue living. They, and, and, and when they were talking about uh, the, the undead souls of the saints would be like getting up and walking around, right? There's that version or there's the, the modern reinterpretation where we have these invisible spirit pieces in us that like look like us, but are like, you know, a spiritual component of us that gets out and then, you know, drives another vehicle or goes, it goes away somewhere. Right. Is that what you're arguing for? Do we have a, an invisible soul in us, according to you? No, that's a good question, because I want to get what why you're so certain there is not a soul in a second. Let me answer first. What, what is a profit a man if he gains the whole world yet forfeits his soul? I'm writing a book on this topic. OK, first book. We'll see yeah. how it goes. But what soul means there contextually is the soul is the physical. It's the social, the relational. It's the emotional. Okay, so you don't believe in the supernatural soul. Soul is the whole person. So you don't believe in a supernatural resurrection. We're not going to be floating souls. We're going to be physical, relational body. So I'm looking for a yes or a no here. You don't believe in a supernatural soul. No, I just gave you my answer. It, but it, what it's is the undeterminable soul? as what, a what yes or no. Talking? Do you believe that when the body the dies, that there's this, like, I don't know, transparent, maybe crystal blue version of you that goes walking along in a misty form, or, or that floats up without feet, whatever, do you believe it in a in a supernatural component, a spiritual aspect that animates life? Do you do you do you believe that when you when when Darth Vader cuts your body down, that that Luke will be able to talk to the phosphorescent blue sparkling you later? Blue. Well, you put it so beautifully, you're kind of making it an attractive idea for me. So maybe, but yes, I believe that there is all of in our language is Aaron Ra, myself, Stuart, yourself. Our experience, not connected to our bodies in the sense of when we're talking about our personal selves, selfhood, I think that that could be connected to this little blue guy who's going to be floating away, perhaps when we die. Perhaps it's connected to near-death experiences. Which... Okay, so you do believe in this spiritual thing that supposedly exists in or in integrated with we're interfused with our body that when our physical body dies, there's some spirit. Like what Yoda I, said, you know, we are luminous beings, not this crude matter. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I think I think it makes a lot more sense. The way you put it, it doesn't make much sense. I agree. But the way I would put it, I think it makes total sense when it comes into. Okay, well, then all, make all, your attempt to make that make sense, because I've talked to some leading philosophers and they don't think it makes sense at all. What can Stuart say? Well, you got to talk to J.P. Moreland, then. He's the okay, best on this. So Stuart can't say anything. No, but Stuart's about to say it. Stuart just gave two answers, and he started in on a third, but then got rudely interrupted, and his, his train of thought is, la is lacking right now. But coming back, I think everything, my third point, would be the self, selfhood, personhood, this innate drive, metaphysical drive that came out of the Bible – even the Harry Potter fans would say this. Even, you know, sweet J.K. Rowling, who says she's a Christian, says that the metaphysical piece of equality for all and the soul outside of the body is something that we all believe truly in, whether we are going to be honest about it or not. You're not just neurochemical. Also, so if I disagree with you, I'm dishonest. Is that the poisoning of the well that we're doing right now? Yes. See, the alternative is just your no neurochemicals and neurons. You're, you're a moist. But if I disagree with you that I'm being dishonest, is that the picture you're painting now? You're a moist robot, and you're only getting moister right now. As so that is the poison that you're putting into the well? What is? That if I disagree with you, because of course I do, and you knew that before you said it, but it's not because I'm dishonest. It's because Christianity is dishonest and asserts baseless speculation as if it was a matter of fact, which is fundamentally a lie. No, I think our see we're getting into more of the experiential right now. I think scientifically, when you brought up to me once, or, or was it your buddy um, T Jump? Buddy. Your buddy T Jump. When we were our, we had this debate on the soul, and he's he, his hope and a prayer, and I, he's not here. I, I like the guy. There's nothing bad against him. His hope and a prayer was, hey, yeah, you can look at you know if, if a person dies. Um, you can look at his memories, and actually people can write out his memories. And he was trying to make a case for the brain, and 
And I think that fails every single time because I think there's something immaterial that we cannot nail down scientifically. And when you look at it, it explains our experience. And you can go to near-death experiences, for example. There's something outside of Aaron's physical body and simply his neurochemicals that is attached to love, consciousness, meaning, and purpose that that is connected to a soul. Now, if you want me to give the soul a physical description, no, so I, the, 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 the soul is outside of my body now, is it? No, those things are attached to and give evidence to something in your experience that's you, that's not just your body. And you've got to be able to get on board with that. I, I, I think that's pretty logical. I think the way you put it, yeah, you're right. It, it is illogical in the sense of this, this blue avatar. Oh. Oh, we have a cute doggy. We That's, actually only have one more minute. Uh, so everybody, we've been listening to Stuart's definition of the soul, Aaron's refutation of the soul, and now we're looking at a cute puppy. So yeah. uh, I, I wish let's continue. I wish that I, I, I there's one thing that you have as an advantage to me. I mean, that religious people, regardless of religion, have as this advantage. And you that's that you can just say whatever the fuck you want to say as if it's true. I don't have that ability. I call that lying. If I can't show the truth of it and I say it's true, that's a lie. And yet, never do I see an R and Ra say yes to Stuart on is atheism rational? But maybe you will you will say yes. Well, to yeah, that. not believing impossible nonsense for no good reason is definitely rational, yes. No, no. There's there's a world view that you have. And so you're yeah, and that's that's being rationalism. That is literally that's the definition of my worldview. <laughs> period. Good. I would love to deconstruct that one. We actually... Yeah, well, that, that's another debate. Unfortunately, they, they sold you the wrong one. You came for the wrong one, and you didn't come prepared for oh, that one. No. no, you were slamming the door before I can give anything. Well, to... You, you no, thought no, you were arguing whether Christianity was rational, <laughs> and the arguments that you made, the disjointed, drunken stupor arguments that you made, have I'm not nothing drinking. to do with rationalism. I'm not and drinking they... or drinking right now. I, you I'm are a, we, sorry, we, sir. I was gonna say no as a correction, right? Uh, I'm, I'm sorry, he, gents. Uh, so I was trying to cut in there. Uh, this might be a good time to go into the Q and A. Uh, we do have quite a few questions you coming in. Uh, you know, hopefully everybody's been enjoying this, and uh, definitely hit that like button. We were just ending off our discussion about is Christianity oh, true uh, with some notions uh, of our thoughts about the soul. So we're gonna kick it into Q and A. So thank you everybody for being here. And once again, a reminder that we're doing a live event. And Aaron's going to actually be there. That's going to be Saturday, oh, fuck. Do I gotta? September 16th. I think you do. You already said you <laughs> would, buddy. I'm sorry. I mean, if you don't show up now, we're going to we're gonna say things about you. You know, we'll be like, that guy, that right. guy. I won't tip one back with him, you know, next. No, I will. I always will. Reading is sexy. Yeah, Richard Clark, fuck you. No, I haven't been caught in any lies. I don't. <laughs> well, I should not never... look at you. Yeah, Never mind our crazy. live chat because there are nice people and there are not so nice people. And then so. there's Richard Clark. <laughs> Richard Clark, you're getting called out. Sorry, buddy. Uh, that happens sometimes on live stream. Be polite. Uh, so uh, just want to remind everybody exactly that. Keep your Q&As friendly because I'm not going to read them if they're just mudslinging because I don't care for that. And uh, I want to watch what I say online here because I've remained enigmatic. Everybody online is like, oh, I wonder what Ryan believes. You'll never know. Or maybe you will. Who knows, right? But uh, either way, i got to behave. The Unlucky Legume, $10. Can we get some super chats going to support modern day debate? Seeing as they went to the trouble of setting this up and missed out on a night of live streaming. Well, thank you, Unlucky Legume. Uh, we're doing all right over here at uh, Modern Day Debate. Uh, you know, we got lots of debates coming up, and we are going to uh, organize a debate on uh, the, uh, a positive atheist uh, claim. I know Leo Phileas wanted to do that uh, with Nadir and them, so uh, we, we are going to look into getting that set up again, uh, the case for positive atheism, uh, but uh, just stay tuned for that. I'm also looking at getting an astrology debate set up, so... Uh, yeah, keep your eyes peeled for that because that's going to be a first time on Modern Day Debate. Charles Lehner for $1.99. James is still the goat. Well, I actually, uh, I, I agree, of course, because uh, he's he's kind of my boss in a certain sense. I mean, we work together kind of in a partnership, but I mean, I, 
I'm going to check with him before I do anything. So these are all for modern day debate, apparently, all off the bat. Uh, Melavaya, at work, can't watch you. I love you, Aaron. Well, thank you. That's a nice uh, positive membership uh, chat. Melavaya actually had a problem with me saying kick it over and messaged me on Discord. So I've, I've tried to mitigate it a little bit. But after he messaged me to say stop saying kick it over all the time, I was kicking it over the entire debate because I'm a rock star and I got to be a rebel. Oh, flamey old for six, six, six. The number of the beast. 666 from Oflamio. Stuart, here is uh, my solution to relativism. If you give me an F, I will give you a nuggy, Professor. Incentive per, uh, persist in relativism, Stuart. Yeah, I don't... What? I, I, I'll read it again exactly as it's written out, but Oflamio, maybe you want to clarify. Stuart, here is my solution to relativism. If you give me an F, I think like on a quiz, I will give you a nuggy, professor. So, like, I will physically abuse you, professor, uh, if you give me an F. Incentives yeah. persist in relativism, Stuart. Oh, sure. Absolutely. But it's still, ultimately... Yeah, okay. Ryan, was I going to... Further... You, you went like this. I didn't know whether to stop or not. No, no, you're good. If you want to respond to that, that's all there is to it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I, I, I don't disagree with that statement. There's still going to be objective standards out there, though. And we know it's not all relative. We know ultimately it's wrong, really wrong, to kick a puppy, especially one of those beautiful ones that uh, Aaron has back there. Very pretty puppies. He's got a lot of nice snakes, too, and my daughter is obsessed with snakes, so all the time she's coming to me asking if she can buy one. Get a boa. I, I'm going to have to look into that for sure because, uh, you know, it's, it's a long time coming. Uh, oh, Flamio for $3.33. Uh, you know, the devil's younger brother there, half of the 666. How do we know Yahweh won't eat us, too, Stuart? The, what won't eat us? How do we know Yahweh won't eat us too, Stuart. I think they're talking. They have about your religion like a, confused with Cthulhu. <laughs> I th I think they might be talking about like a yeah like the dog eat dog kind of thing of survival of the fittest baby. I don't know if that got brought up or but I, I'm not sure. Oh, Flamio, you're you're giving us some curveballs, buddy. Tonight, you know, you're usually a little bit more consistent. Uh, do you have anything to say on that, Stuart, or just? Uh... Yeah, yeah. I, I again, I it, it's the whole idea of. I mean, why not treat our fellow man as just an annoying, punkish little ape running around? If it's simply evolution and there is no God and Christianity didn't exist, I, I just I don't know why we wouldn't do that. It's you know, we are raised red in tooth and claw. It's an ape. You know, we came that, from oh. we came from apes. Why not just love one another? All yeah, of it, so if, if we're a social animal uh, because we are apes, uh, and therefore we're, just, we're entirely reliant on a social structure in lieu of there being a god, because there is no god. So the one thing that we have to rely on is somebody who stands by their word and who shows empathy and for his family, friends, and fellows. And shut up! Stop it! I'm on camera! <laughs> That's not for you, Stuart, I swear, right? Aaron's a little <laughs> more polite than that, uh, generally. Aaron, mind your manners. My God. Uh, <laughs> no, you're all good. So being as we are apes, uh, and, and we're all equal here, we're, we're all part of nature, not apart from it, uh, and there is, no, there is no outside force to come save us from ourselves. We are our only hope. We have to help each other. This is one of the reasons, this is how morality evolved, there was a there was a time in our in our evolution where we didn't have big brains yet, and we didn't have quite the, the the muscular strength that chimpanzees and gorillas had. But what we did have was a stronger sense of empathy than they have now, wherein some terrible predator attacks the the weakest or slowest of us, and suddenly they realize that they have to face all of us, that we're not running away to leave the slow and the weak behind. We're all turning and facing that enemy all of us at once and every big cat realized hey i can't kill all fucking 40 of them so i have to back the fuck off that's what made us suspect a great species that's what enabled our intelligence to grow that's how we became moral and that is exactly where it stops 
empathy. We don't get love. And if we just go with the empathy... How do you not get love from empathy? I don't... I don't so how for, do you make these assumptions? Well, for example, O.J. Simpson's lawyer talked about how... Okay. Look in the shame and honor cultures, or if you look from evolution, and then you all of a sudden turn towards Christianity, then you're going to see a, a type of self-sacrificing love that has never been part of any other culture. So you have that's that. A, that's been part of every culture. If you're simply going to go from the empathetic side of things, yes, there's empathy. Yeah. With the so it's been part of every culture. But ultimately, ultimately, you're, you have to land with empathy. It's an atheist overreach right. to I'm going to love somebody uh, across the globe, and I'm going to fight for human rights, no uh -huh. matter what the consciousness rationale, no matter what yeah. suffering level. No, only Christianity spread the image of God. Uh, except, except that you just you just contradicted yourself. You're describing the atheist About position, and then suddenly described well, it, and suddenly claimed question. that it was the Christian position. This is my question. I get to end here. So, so for me, it's the fair. selfish knave that unfortunately would break down Aaron's pretty little picture right there where, yes, we do want to fight the lion or we do want to team up and work together. But ultimately, if I'm a free rider and it's not going to really hurt the team, why can't I just be a free rider? As opposed so to what you're talking about is the aberration that that can't be relied upon, that doesn't have the empathy, that that doesn't back their word. And so through a matter of population mechanics, those people tend to be removed from the gene pool, either being by being ostracized, imprisoned, or killed. So one yep. way or the other, they're no, out. I, no, I, I can be very good at, at stealing with my hedge fund, for example. I can cheat the IRS very easily. And be that just, has nothing to do with what I just said. Along with that, though, from your perspective. I said from a, a matter of population mechanics, such people as you're describing tend to be identified and, ost and uh, ostracized. Okay, but not really. Not in my neck of the woods. Maybe yours. May maybe in Texas. But I live in Fairfield County, Connecticut. And those who get away with all kinds of things, whether it's cheating on your wife or cheating on your taxes, they're not really ostracized. I'm going to be real. If anything, they're... they're You're right. They're Republicans. <laughs> Well, no, Connecticut's fairly blue now. I, I wish it was... Yeah, but we, in Texas, they're all Republicans. The people that you're describing right now? No. No, Texas is getting more and more blue, and Austin is... Except the people that you're describing right now are Republicans. Oh, I'm talking the center about... of hypocrisy, definitely, hip definitely GOP. And to end, since this was my question, to end, this connects oh, to Aaron pushing me on Christian values, and another one that was unique was forgiveness to Christianity. As Which our, you don't have. have. As our nation has become a little more secularized, fortunately atheism will decrease in the years to come, according to Pew Research. And fortunately it will, not, because it's growing by attenuation, not birth rates. Less R and increases, and he's already doing a great no, job. No, because they, don't, they, they re habitually it never count a, for attenuation. That's how atheism grows. Atheism doesn't grow by birth rates. It grows by attenuation. Yeah, and they're not. You guys aren't going to have any more babies. That's the problem. But we don't grow by birth rates, so oh, it doesn't yeah. matter how fast Christianity grows or Islam grows by birth rates. Because once those when, when when Islam moves into Europe, for example, then their problem is attenuation, so that a, a significant percentage of their adults aren't Muslim anymore. And the same thing's going on with Christianity, where they lose a huge amount. They lose at minimum of twenty percent, minimum. When you say attenuation, break that down. This is when people no longer believe. Yeah. So Daniel Dennett and his wife started the clergy project, and they, they realize that if they're getting a lot of preachers who, who contact them because they no longer buy the bullshit that they've been selling for so many decades. Yeah. But here they are stuck in this job. How do you move from what, what career would you move to from preacher? Used car salesman? What else can you do? So they reach out to this network, the clergy project network. And what the, and one of the statistics that they're noticing is that people, when they realize they no longer believe in Christianity, they come out being more liberal. They're more tolerant. They're more curious. They want to go back to college. They want to learn the things that they never learned before. They end up being just on the whole better people. Well, that'll be our next debate. For, wait, Ryan, Ryan, forgiveness, forgiveness. It came from the cross of Christ. And as secularization grows a little bit, not atheism, secularization, now you see forgiveness start to break down, especially in political circles and especially in the echo chambers. 
And as objective morality breaks down, now we're all shouting over each other. Christians were supposed to be the preachy ones, but now all of a sudden everybody is preachy but Christians. And so for a forgiving God is what we all desire, and that has a lot to do— Except with, that we don't all desire that. Well, if, you're, if you want to love and actually grow— the population. If, you, if you want to love and grow and not believe in impossible nonsense for no good reason, then you don't want a, you don't want a God. Why do atheists always say, I'm just forgiving for my own sake and not for the sake of the other? Because we, we don't say <laughs> that, and that's not what I said. It's because it's a Christian value. No, it, it's not a Christian value. I'm a member of the Satanic Temple. That's, that's actually in their seven tenets, is forgiveness. But yeah. forgiveness, ha but we actually have a way of doing forgiveness where Christianity doesn't. Christianity doesn't do forgiveness. They put you in hell. Oh, you didn't believe the stupid story without any evidence? Well, I'm sorry. It doesn't matter what your bullshit excuse is. You're going to hell. It doesn't matter how you thought that, you know, no, no, no. you're going to hell because we're judgmental and not righteous judge. But in Satanism, we have a means of forgiveness. The, the only the issue with forgiveness is that you have to understand that you've done something wrong. There has to be some kind of admission that, yeah, I fucked up and I, I need to make this right. And upon making that statement, now we can work with you on making it right. That's what I really love. I, I like that there is a means of forgiveness because there's not many organizations that offer that. You like Close that, side, Stuart? All right. He likes it in Christianity. Next question. I like that. Uh, excuse me, what? You said you like that part about Christianity. Forgive me. Are you lying about me again? Next, next Why question. is Christianity always about lying? Next question. Next question. <laughs> what, what, seriously, why is everything you believe a lie and everything you say in defense of those lies always a lie? That's the problem I have with Christianity. No, was it, my, it may have been my hearing. I honestly thought you said that. No, I didn't say it. I said I was Satanist. No, and I that's what I liked about Satanism was that there's an there's a an, an, a a means of forgiveness where Christianity doesn't have that. All right, Christians don't forgive, and the doctrine is not because you have hell, Excellent. which means that there's no rehabilitation. You're simply judged, not even on whether you're moral or immoral, but whether or what you believed believed. That's what you're being judged for. Three case studies. Oh, immoral is that. Three case studies. I want you to look up just in the last couple of years. Botham Jean and the shooting of the racist white cop. And forgive Does that have any fuck all to do with Christian theology on. and whether God judges you they, or whether you believe? They are based off of Christian. That doesn't change the fact that, that your theology says that your God judges you entirely over whether or what you believe. All right, let's let uh, Stuart wrap this one up there, Aaron, and we'll move on. I don't think he can. These huge news stories that captivated the entire nation. The Which Am have nothing to do with your theology. The Amish tri No, no, no. I'm going to get there. All based off of Christian correct theology, not this hell and well, fire. You can't say those two contradictory things in the same sentence and just expect Amish to get away with it. You can't Jean say that Christian theology is correct and just have me accept that because it's not. That's There's tough. no such thing as a Christ as a correct theology. But if there was, it wouldn't be Christian. Well, I mean, you guys, you guys dig your own your own grave here. I mean, we'll go as late as you guys want to go. I'm having a ball. I'm trying to respect you guys' this time uh, because uh, you know you might have certain constraints, but uh, I'm fine for you guys to riff as long as you want to riff. Honestly. Oh, I don't want to spend here all night. I've been working on another script all day. Ah, uh, well, I was gonna say that's why I say if you guys want to keep going on this one, uh, this one question. Oh, and I can riff on mostly on unconscious. No, I'm having a good time. Fuck you. <laughs> I really shouldn't look at your chat. There's some idiots in there. Arn, what are you drinking? Don't, I'm getting, don't, getting don't. curious, Arn. What are you drinking? A local brew. Ooh. Tam Tamtress. You know what? I, I, I'd said that Arn before. 12% ABV. Oh, 12%. I was going to say, I've, I've got like a 4% because I'm behaving myself, but it's actually on brand. It's called The Nun on the Run. Uh, yeah, now what I started this evening with was I killed this bottle, but... <laughs> <laughs> I watched you do that. that yeah, was... that was mead. Very good stuff, by the way. <laughs> oh man, that was that was that was rough opening up that. Let's move on to the next super chat. Sorry, Stuart, did you have some commentary? What are you what are you up to over there? I just said I had cut water for the first time a couple days ago. Does that mean you peed yourself? I don't get it. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> That tends to happen after I drink a little bit. Yes. Yes. Okay. <laughs> it's going to happen eventually if we keep drinking beer the way we were. Uh, or, or, or I should say, Big Thing Flying Wayne says for $10, Stuart, 
I'm paying $10 for you to stop using the we worship everything argument. This is where it gets a little spicy. He says, that argument is trash. Money isn't an extraordinary claim. It exists. Your God doesn't. Quit false equivocating. Yeah, and, and there, if, if there's one I could plead for, I get, I get really, really, really tired of the thing about, well, you're an atheist. You think everything came from nothing. No, fucking nobody believes that. Stop fucking saying that. <laughs> Creationists believe everything came from nothing. We don't. <laughs> That's another debate. I'm actually going to want to get your take on that, but the worship one. No, don't take it from me there, little angry elf. Take it from a very strong, creative... Little angry elf? Whoever that kid was. He sounded okay. like a little... He sounded angry. Big thang, flying Wayne. You're getting called a little elf, it, I think. Okay. <laughs> Just take it. Take it from the atheist I was quoting, who many would have said would have been the top, top fiction writer in our generation, who unfortunately hung himself. I promise not because of his atheism. I promise. It was not because of the bleakness of his worldview. It had nothing to do with that. It had to do... Because our worldview is not bleak. <laughs> it was more so a matter of him saying, if you really focus on what you unconsciously believe, and you... Like, like I see this all the time. And I gave an example of the girl who's in the psych unit because she really started feeling like I'm worshiping my art. And she didn't make it into the school she wanted to make it in. And so she went crazy. And this happens all the time around me. Maybe not all the time around you, but even if it's not to that extreme, I think we can all all honestly say, and I know worship, the word worship is triggering for atheists, so I won't because use that. Because we don't worship and we don't like being lied about. Sure. Whatever you ultimately find worthy or, or the most important in your life. Can we say that? But if, if I find something important, that doesn't mean I worship it. Sure. That, no, that's, that's what I'm saying. Okay. It's the most important thing. So whatever you find most important... You can get in trouble, his point is, as opposed to if it's located something that's not fine. For example, I know many people who have gotten mentally and emotionally, and I mean physically even, crushed by the death of loved ones. Well, you got to love your loved ones, but if you don't have anything higher than your loved ones, unfortunately, life is going to get really hard and downright depressing and crushing if you have the death of a loved one occur, if they're kind of what you find most important in this life. So that's the point he's making. That's the point he's making. He's this, made- this is one of the difficulties I have about speaking for anybody else, because I understand that some people deal with depression and it's not something that I can even relate to for whatever reason. I've just, I've always had a very positive outlook. Like always I've, I've enjoyed every minute of my life, even at my work, even at my lowest points, I still manage to enjoy my life better than some people enjoy their better moments. I don't know why that is, but I'm glad that that is that way. And where I see injustice in the world is is often on, beh- on behalf of Christians. I see people who get away with terrible crimes and they ju- and they don't even know that they've done anything wrong. They'll never even admit that they fucked up, you know, fucked over other people. And I, I find that disastrous. When other people, very often Christians, get completely screwed over, and their their karma is it, it, it's such that they ha- they end up with these horrible, horrible existences that I couldn't even bear. Now, I I would not want to live through some of the things that I've seen other people live through, and these are Christians. Some of the most some of the most morose lives I've ever seen have been from diehard believers, and I'm not saying that I'm not blaming the belief on that. It should maybe the belief has something to do with it, with their inability to take power over it. I don't know, but I, I still feel empathy for these people for for being in such a, a miserable situation. I never experienced that. I've always had it good. I think even when I, I, I was always poor, and it, it, it's not like that. But I mean, I've I've just always enjoyed life, and I and I and I I lament that there's a bunch of other people that I know of who have never been able to enjoy any moment the way that I enjoy most. Well, that's awesome. That's, that's great. Aaron is a, is a optimist and uh, we're happy to hear that because uh, you know, there's a lot of people around here that, uh, yeah, you know, you're in the live chat. If you just got something miserable to say, well, you just heard Aaron's outlook on life. 
uh, you know, you're not going to bring them down with uh, your your little petty comments in the live chat. So keep them. Well, there's a lot of petty comments. <laughs> keep <laughs> them on point, people, uh, because we don't appreciate uh, people that are just trolling in the live chat. We want to keep. Uh, we're trying to elevate the discussion over here at Modern Day Debate and vet a bit more and do what we can. So, um, you know behave in there because we don't want to put you on time out by this poppy for 4.99 Stuart, if humans are prone to sin and lying is a sin why is it not likely that followers of jesus lied about his resurrection because of what we talked about in terms of were the eyewitnesses legitimate could we trust them were they early and if it was early testimony then it was unlikely that this even lie could get off the ground. Was it, was there enemy attestation? See, that's a big one as well. If there's enemy attestation to it, that this really did happen, we got to make up some type of rumor, then even if they are prone to lie, you have extraneous things going on that still shows that the resurrection occurred. So yes. Didn't occur. Correction. Anybody? <laughs> Didn't occur. Yeah, it's it's a frustrating thing. I see all these comments in the chat, and and then from also Stuart, where they just say these things like they're true, but they're that are not defensively true. Well, it's whoever says it most confidently between you and me is going to win the debate. Well, it doesn't matter what our confidence is, because I've seen liars that are extremely astute at being confident. So confidence means nothing. Well, it's it, just it's just whether you can show but, that it's true. But it's your That's, word versus my word. So often here, it sounds like. Okay, so, but but I can, but I can show. I just make a point, and you come down. You bring the javel with this authoritative statement, saying it's just not true. I can't help that I'm right. I'm sorry, and it's confident. But I could say that about anything. Yeah, you could. You could it lie about anything with equal confidence. The issue is sense. whether we can show that it is true. I brought up a bunch of things that you did not even begin to address. You, you you took on the, the position that most believers do, where you defend the belief in the belief without necessarily defending the truth. I the would truth. have, I apologize. I would have loved to have addressed those five things that you brought, or ten things you brought up. We we couldn't get past each other in terms of the, uh, the back and forth interruption. But honestly, that's why I ended up actually giving you a big compliment saying that your points were the best ones in terms of the most exciting for me to talk about. That I've ever received. And don't worry, I'll save a my word document. We'll, we'll get to him at some point in the future. Oh, yeah. I'm sure this isn't the last time we've seen uh, Stuart and Aaron Raw on Modern Day Debate because we always have a ton of fun when you guys are on. And this is my first time hosting you guys. And I'm having, I, I, I'm trying not to use colorful language, I'm having a, a, a crud ton of fun with you fellas. So uh, let's continue on with the uh, yeah. <laughs> super right. chats. Pointless Poppy, 499. Stuart, why did no one keep track of the names of the 500 people Jesus supposedly... Oh, I lost it there. Did you just say supposedly? Supposedly. Get at it. it just, it just, shh, calm down. Why did no one keep track of the names of the 500 people Jesus supposedly appeared to? <laughs> Dicking on me. <laughs> it was the word was supposedly was not in there. <laughs> no, I so so the five hundred. That is an interesting one, but just because there are some out of all the others that were mentioned who aren't named specifically, doesn't make that a horrendous deal. I mean, when Paul talks about some of them have fallen asleep, many scholars would say that gives people an understanding that they would have known who to who have gone to. And they wouldn't be going to those who had fallen asleep because that means that they were dead. So there would have been knowledge in the community. Just like, you know, when you get footnotes like Simon of Cyrene or Malchus, for example, or in Luke 24, Road to Emmaus, and one's named and the other's not named. Yes, it can be frustrating because there's so many footnotes throughout the Gospels showing again to their credibility. But with the 500, there's not a clear Simon of Cyrene, for example. And yet you do have some have fallen asleep, some have not. So there would most likely have been some type of consensus understanding of who had not fallen asleep and who they really were. All right. Well, again, that goes back to what I was saying before about you know, Jesus says that you won't taste of death and that you'll still be alive. And in the original version that the, there's not a soul that comes out of you. It's that your physical body 
will rise again and so that's that's why they say you know that that that, that, that these these several undead saints walking around doing the thriller in downtown judea that's that's the kind of resurrection that they were talking about actually you know what what jesus was pretending to do with people you know bring them back to life so they get up and walk around again but the jews had no understanding of the type of resurrection that actually occurred they never because they believed in sheol they never would have accepted that right because they believed in sheol so they would have accepted what what jesus was talking about where you get up and walk around again not the the whole new idea about you that you have this invisible soul inside you that then floats up into heaven that was a different idea that's where the the christians took this idea a lot of the christianity of course was based on judaism and Ju judaism was based largely on zoroastrianism but this one aspect the christians uh, got reached back past Judaism to take this other aspect from Zoroastrianism that the Jews didn't adopt. And that was the notion of this posthumous judgment, where in the, uh, the Avestas, uh, I think it's the Zend Avesta or the Hadnak Nast, where it says that uh, the, the righteous man upon his death will rise to the kingdom of justice and truth under the wise Lord Ahura Mazda. But the wicked man upon his death will descend into the kingdom of the lie ruled by Araman the opposer which is the uh, the opposer meaning the enemy also pronounced Hashatan which was the Satan hmm. all right let's close that one out uh any thoughts on that Stuart to close this out 10 seconds about no yeah I just think it's another piece of evidence for the resurrection of Christ that the resurrection itself would have been totally rejected by anybody and nobody would have thought up of it that would have been the last type of hoax that somebody would have thought up of and that it occurred. So many, many scholars. That that's exactly what the Jews would have expected. No, that's Who? what modern <laughs> modern Jews and Christians wouldn't have thought that because they have a different interpretation that involves a soul. The Sadducees but, would never have expected it. That's exactly the what they would have expected because they were, they were would have thought it would have been a general at the end of time. And the no, 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 that's because Jewish script because that's Jesus failed to meet any of the criteria that the Jews predicted for their Messiah. So that they were expecting a world leader that was going to, you know, that that, that was never going to die, uh, and that was going to, you know, raise uh, 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 Israel to the, this world power and everything—all these things that never happened. So yeah. Jesus failed all the. He actually met one. The only criteria that he met for for being the Jewish Messiah was that he was Jewish. Yeah. So Bar That's Bar Kokhba and about there were about twenty failed Messiah movements. None of them would have had anything to do with a single. Messiah having died on the most bloody death imaginable on a cross and having risen from the dead. All right. Well, let's move on to our next super chat, everybody. Uh, it seems we've got our ideas out on that one. Thanks for your super chat there, Pointless Poppy for Stuart. Uh, El Arant 499. I am a Muslim from Transoxia. Uh, Transoxana? So Tran Transoxania. I've never heard of a this Muslim place. Muslim from transsexual Transylvania? What? Yeah. From transsexual, you know, uh, the live chat might not believe this, but I, I have a, a full Frankenfurter outfit um, for the people who know what that is. Um, yeah, I played Frankenfurter for a while. Oh, well, isn't that glorious? How'd yeah. you do I? Anyways, Salem <laughs> to all. Question for atheists. Where do you get your ethics from? Is it coming from empirical evidence? Our ethics, as I explained earlier, came from our evolution as a social species. So we depend upon society to survive because no man is an island, if you're familiar with that term. Society as an abstract concept, in turn, depends on us to cohabitate productively. Now, those who cannot, those who will, will only meet their own selfish ends, those who have no compassion for other people, tend, as I explained before, tend to be eliminated from society so that we, as a course of uh, population mechanics over many generations, we identify the people who stand by their word, who are reliable and, and who, who do for the community. And those are the ones that are rewarded with the most wives and children, whereas the people who only serve their own selfish needs, at least in Stone Age cultures, will eventually be eliminated from society. At some point, of course, you get into super technological things, and then we, we seem to have a turnaround where, for whatever reason here recently, 
if you're all about yourself, completely narcissistic, only brag about yourself, don't give a fuck about anybody else, piss on everybody else, well, then everybody else will worship you. But that, I hope, has only been something that's been going on in the last, say, decade or so. All righty. Oh, Any thoughts? Matter, like, like why is that really bad? Why is what really bad? The narcissism. Why is narciss? Why is only caring about yourself selfishly to the to the disdain of everyone else yeah. and to the detriment of society as a whole? Why is that bad? Yeah. Does that not answer the question already? No, I just again, I, if if you can get away with it, it doesn't really harm society. But it does for the reasons I just explained. But. Yeah, but does it harm the society that much? Yeah, it hard it's harms society that much. Yes. you you are you are taking advantage of every you are impoverishing everyone to enrich yourself. This is harming society exactly that much. Me cheating on exam. Is that really harming society? When you take a single example by itself, then we're not talking about population mechanics over many generations, are we? We're looking at a big picture here. Oh. So the problem I have with one of the many problems I have with arguing with creationists is that they that were Christians is that they always want to bring up this one isolated example and say what's the harm in a little white lie? They're Kinda always like looking for, they're always looking for the permission for the one evil stupid antisocial thing. What's so wrong about this one thing that I do that's bad? Well, because when you count it up over time, these become worse. But they don't think like that. Well, that's like when an atheist tries to interpret a Bible verse. One and at a time. It correctly, inevitably. <laughs> All right. Well, let's move on from there. And uh, Elrond, because I did. Uh, Elrond is actually, uh, he's got another super chat. We'll get over to it because uh, I think he's just a little brought down because when we. <laughs> when you're not. not. <laughs> <laughs> he thought we were the candy man. That's right. All right. Before we get a super, a super strike on the channel here, uh, we'll get over to your other question there, Elrond. Uh, but I'm glad that it spurred, uh, spurred all our Frankenfurter. So what to get said, uh, usual on the channel asks, Aaron, is there an objective moral standard? If yes, yes. if yes, all right. Intent required to establish that order if no how can you invoke moral high ground over god so he's saying that if you have if you've answered yes isn't and i did earlier in the show yeah so isn't intent required to establish that order i think is the crux i said in order to determine whether something is moral or immoral you have to have criteria right we all we have to have a universal agreement on what the criteria are and I think we have that where everybody understands that if I were just walk to, to, to walk down to the bus stop and kick somebody in the shins for no damn reason, that's going to be immoral. I don't have a need to cause somebody else harm or suffering, right? I'm just, just visiting pain upon somebody else. That's objectively understood to be immoral. Everybody gets that. Nobody's ambiguous about that. So I think we have an objective moral standard on, on, on what, how to whether we're whether we're causing unnecessary harm or suffering or whether we're uh, you know prolonging happiness well-being or health wait a minute these are moral or immoral and they're objective everybody gets it and the the uh, the argument that i hear all the time is well what what about some whole society that's been taken over by evil people who then use political propaganda to their ends to try to justify their evil well if they didn't know that it was objectively evil then they wouldn't be coming up with the propaganda bullshit lies to try to cover it up or to make excuses for it so that's how we know that even they know that it's objectively evil what they're doing thoughts over there Stuart. nope i like it okay all right uh does that mean we're in agreement is that is that another huzzah kind of moment yeah, I, at some point, I want to I want to share another another area of agreement I have with Aaron. This agreement is so in the Greek, Jesus does talk about those who are touched by the moon. So it's not him exercising demons at all times. He he did understand he was ahead of his time in understanding what mental health was, but typically it was exercising demons. So you take that he did have a nuanced understanding. The Book of Proverbs has a phenomenally under, mixed understanding that's nuanced. That's why the Bible is the best psychology book really ever written. That's a, that's a book I'm I'm writing right Please now. Please don't say stupid shit while you're trying to oh, make. Oh, it here's where I'm. Well, here's what you're gonna like. Here's what you're gonna like. I agree with Aaron on his characterization, or a truth. It's truth 
on what he says about a, a lot of religious people, religious Christians, if you will, who get half baked Christianity, kind of more of the fundamentalist types, some of the snake handlers. And so here's where it gets personal. What do you say about snake handlers? What's that? What are you saying about snake handlers? <laughs> hey, don't you do it. It'll do your points. Where where are the snakes, Arun? Like, uh, I was hoping to They're see sleeping. one wrapped They're around. behind me. They're all hoping... over. I've, I've got like 53 of them back there. <laughs> I was hoping to see one wrapped around your uh, your, your your frame. Yeah, I was going to grab my retic, but he, he's he's in a bit of a mood. It's a, it's, a, it's a little inspiration for your Genesis 315 uh, paper, too. Yeah, true. So, anyway, what I was going to say... Where I agree with Aaron is I have a lot of holy discontent towards a lot of those religious types who totally misinterpret scripture, who make the body, whether they elevate the body too much or say the body is nothing, it's just it's all about the soul. I'll give one example. My grandpa was very high up in the Seventh-day Adventist church, and he got depression and even had a little, probably, it was paranoia, but maybe even a little psychosis at one point, where he saw kind of men in suits coming after him on the property. And he was really, really like internationally high up on, on the uh, Seventh-day Adventist podium, podium. And so a lot of people came to him and was like, whoa, you're way too spiritual. You're way too spiritual to take any medication or get therapy. You know, you're our, you're our man, not, not God, but you're, you're our man. And so he didn't for the longest time and he almost committed suicide. Finally, he got on medication and boom, Everything was fine. Great. Went back to his work. So there are a lot of those religious types out there. And I think a lot of it has to do with their own ego, religiosity type, as well as misinterpretation of scripture. And so I have as much anger when I deal with those kinds of people. Whoo, takes a lot to hold back. I tell you that much more so than probably any other group of, of people. So my All testimony. Right. Well, let's try to carry on there uh, because we do have quite a few more Super Chats coming in. And uh, I, I had a figuring that this was going to go a little over time. So I am I, I am apologetic to any of our speakers. Uh, but like I said earlier, you know, it's up to you guys if you uh, want to riff and uh, kind of dig into each other's beliefs. Uh, you know, I'm all for it. But uh, you, you guys, uh, if you want to cap it where you want to. Oh, Aaron is grabbing, I think, something exciting potentially. <laughs> Oh, I see a little pretty something. Oh, is there a little rattler on the back there? No, I wouldn't imagine. This is a Dumeril's boa. Ooh, very pretty. This would be a very good choice for your kids. They're I, slow I moving. One. They're beautiful. They get to be five or six feet long, sometimes up to eight. Oh. But they're manageable. And I like to refer to these. See these uh, masks along the side, these little tiki masks? They're yeah. beautiful. I refer to these as the souls of the damned. Oh, very. <laughs> are you into D and D at all? There, Aaron. I'm. I'm a big D and D guy. Well, of course. Okay. Well, that's great. All right. I just had. What to kind ask. of? <laughs> what kind of snake do you think was in the garden? There wasn't one in the garden. Oh, jeez. Oh, I don't. Mean, I don't mean to offend, but let's just say if there was, what would you think? What kind would it be? Well, it, 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 it's a nonsense question. Let's move I mean, on, fellas. I, I don't think we'll come into uh, into a moment of agreement here. But that that is a beautiful snake you have there, yeah, Aaron. I, I didn't for, think I would say that kids, live. I would recommend this one pattern right there. <laughs> I didn't think I'd be complimenting you on your beautiful snake there, Aaron, on a live stream. But uh, that's what I'm doing here. <laughs> that's a beautiful snake you got there. Uh, Ultra for two dollars says, "To be honest, Aaron Ra, I love you, but you do look like a villain." Uh, Oh, look at that smile. He, he, <laughs> he's, he, he's, he's a charmer is what he is, fellas. Everybody here is, is, is a good fella. Uh, I, 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 I've been super enjoying, uh, your guys' energy tonight. So this is, this well, is dirty, amazing. rotten sinners too, Ryan. <laughs> those, those hands of an sinners. angry God. <laughs> Steven Sal for $20 try, trying to throw me off Stuart and then Aaron's holding <laughs> that snake. Stuart Saul for $20. Aaron raw. You should just ask for proof of any of the biblical claims you and I both know doesn't exist. Do, both know it doesn't exist. And for claiming modern standards should not apply to the Bible, then the Bible is no longer applicable. I think, Stephen, you spent $20 and it sounds like he agrees with you. You should just ask for proof of any of the Bible claims. 
somebody in your chat made mentioned something about Hogwarts. I have to tell you that when I was 12, I remember wondering what kind of an old man will I be? And I looked at the 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 old skinny little guy, bald guy with a with a cane. And I'm like, is that the kind of old man I'm going to be? And then I see this jolly fat Santa Claus looking guy. Is that the kind of old man I'm going to be? And then I saw Gandalf. Oh yes, <laughs> <laughs> you shall pass. <laughs> yeah, Aaron Ra, you pass. That's fine. You know what? You 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 can be. You can be a Gandalf on the stream. That's great, honestly. Oh. That's that's a great reference for inspiration because I I I love those movies and uh, yeah. A quick shout out to my buddy Josh. We were actually watching those movies just before he moved out, and the amount of quotes that were flying out of me after I watched that on this live stream, I think it was driving everybody nuts. You know, I do not remember this place, or I have no memory of this place. All right, so her bands four ninety nine. Um, hey Ryan. James, could we have a Trinitarian slash non-Trinitarian Christian debate in the future? Well, uh, as you all look at the snake there on screen, I'll answer that question. Uh, you know, we do sometimes tempt the waters of having debates between two people of the same belief system, but generally what we want to do is have people that are more opposing in their views so that you guys actually get into more of a nuanced discussion about the differences between uh, these guys and their worldviews and the way that they you know assess information so it is something that we do talk about but you know i even when i was vetting earlier for you know some speakers on astrology you know i was talking to them and i was saying you know uh they said that, you know, there's, there's other classifications of astrology. I might not represent everybody. And it, it's kind of like, that's fine, because the main point is that we're having that discussion. You know what I mean? So it just just the same here. You know, we want to make sure that we're keeping it open and honest and true. Let's carry on. Elorant 499. Aaron, uh, dude, you are a good person. Disregard haters. Hell in Paradise is revealed as classic conditioning for motivational purposes. God can forgive. Well, that took I wish a I turn. could say that I I heard that whole question. Something about God can forgive. No, he can't because he doesn't exist. You kind of have to exist in order to do stuff. Um, what 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 was the rest of it? I don't know. I didn't hear it. Yeah, um, I think that was. It, it, he said, "Hell and paradise are revealed as classical conditioning for motivational purposes." Okay. All right. I didn't. And, and largely lifted from Dante's Inferno. Yeah, Elrond. I'm, I'm sorry that, that there's not a lot of like question there as far as like. I mean, I, maybe Stuart has some thoughts there. You're making a little bit of a a brow. What's going on, buddy? Oh no, I think I have a tick on the back of my head. I was a little concerned. <laughs> well, that's a little bit different. A tick on the back of your head. That's a bit concerning. Uh, so yeah, that's a different. The, that's yeah, a different so we're the capital of the world here in Fairfield County. We actually have a town next to us called Lyme. <laughs> that's not good that's not good my friend <laughs> i have a friend who moved here who's making a lot of money with that there's a new machine out there to treat lyme's disease oh man that's like li oh. living next to gone herpesifilate city yeah it's bad all right so uh that that's that's all of them all in one gonna gonorrhea herpes syphilate yeah anyways i <laughs> gonna herpes herpes syphilate. Gonna syphilate. yeah yeah. <laughs> yeah that's what happens if you get bit by a squirrel uh no it's a joke uh el iran i remember this girl i dated in high school donaria <laughs> oh no <laughs> <laughs> Okay, let's carry on, everybody. Donna Ria. Oh my God. Well, hopefully she didn't make your uh, your your down your downstairs too excited because uh, <laughs> anyways, it could have been a mistake. Elrond, four ninety nine. Karl Marx said religion is opium of masses, but these days opium became religion of masses. Muslims are not becoming Christian. Stuart, are you smoking? Now, I don't know what kind of question that is. Stuart, are you smoking? Uh, that's kind of rude. I mean, who who smokes, especially in there, there Canada? There actually are some 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 uh, Muslims becoming Christian, but also it's the other way around. And I think actually it's worse for Christians becoming Muslim. Because you know, are, I think, they, I think the Muslim? reason why that is is because Islam has less baggage than Christianity does. Oh! The, the fastest growing church last year was in Iran. 
and it was women because they were tired of all the sexism. I couldn't believe when I heard that. It's like, how how is the fastest well, growing? You know how I feel. With women. <laughs> so am I smoking something? Um, I haven't smoked anything for a while. I was just Speak on. Speak to yourself, Stuart. <laughs> Funny, though, that this is coming up because because I was just on a uh, a podcast. Um, I was just on a podcast where that, that was the number one question. Or, or is, it, is it wrong to smoke weed as a Christian? And we came to the conclusion uh, a few puffs is, is not as bad as, a, as three glasses of wine. So it's not a sin if it's, it's if it's a certain amount of THC in your bloodstream. But I have not been smoking as of late, though. I am lucid for the most part. Thank you to the Holy Spirit. And for Which me, exist by the way. <laughs> for me, for me, it's going to be a a matter of I, I, if if they're referencing the DMT studies, that was actually a. That, what the? What? It just takes back. Yeah, I don't know. If I know. Alrighty. <laughs> it's a matter. It's a matter of I'll send the studies, but the studies were impressive. They were also on. Joe, they were shown on Joe Rogan and a few eyewitnesses on uh, who talked about it on on Joe Rogan as well. So why would you say they were impressive and then say they were shown on Joe Rogan? <laughs> You're trying to discredit your own argument. <laughs> <laughs> right. What do you got against my boy Joe? Is he too conservative? He's an atheist. Well, he's kind of an atheist. He believes Jesus was a mushroom. And that Moses was tripping on... Do not. And coming from the bush. Do not compare me or associate me with Joe Rogan. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, the, let's move through the Q&A there, fellas, because, uh, you know, we, we're we only almost, a, we're about a quarter through the way here. And, uh, you know, I don't mind you guys expounding as much as you want to, but, uh, you know, I don't want you guys to be like, oh, crud, it's, you know, three hours, I got to go now, right? And uh, we haven't gotten through. So, like I said, um, let's try to move through um, and you guys kind of dictate on your own where you want to draw your lines. Uh, but uh, I'll try to push it. What's it gets it? Four ninety nine. Aaron, how do you account for the twenty five thousand accounts of our out of body near death experiences, many of which have been empirically validated? Okay, how do I account for fifty years worth of research, wherein there are very, very few accounts that are that don't have clear explanations, and 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 where we have to compare. Christians having a like common Christian experience, and then atheists, long-term atheists at least, having the, your expected no experience at all. And then most importantly, when Hindus have near-death experience, and then they get to meet their gods, and then they come back with proof of reincarnation, which is effectively proof that Christianity is not true. So... Wits it gets it, and I don't think you do. How do you respond to Hindus having this different experience that disproves Christianity from near death experiences? Right. I think so. I yeah, think it'd be a broader if it's a broader question to God, so whether that's H Hindus, gods, or the you know, monotheistic religions. Well, they, they, Hindus consider themselves a monotheistic religion, I know they got a buttload of gods. But, I mean, look at Lord Krishna, for example. He says he's the source of all the demigods and the creator of the multiverse, which is a pretty hellish statement to have made 400 years before the Bible. Yeah. No, that, that is. That, I, I don't know how that discredits the Bible. But I would say, because there's many, many pagan myths that, that sound very similar, but there's no historical accountability to multiverse? it. Multiverse? I think... I think the piece there is there's 400 million accounts of the miraculous just in Asia and across, I think, the studies in Europe alone. You know, there's so many people, if you if you listen to Aaron, there's so many people who need to be dissuaded of this type of Golden Age, Bronze Age mentality or these experiences that people are stuck in, whether it's because of things like drugs or not. But I find it interesting, 400 million for Miraculous, and I think it's 40 million now for Near Death. And then 
500 peer reviewed articles out of Duke on the near death experiences. So I don't know whether they're all, they're definitely not all true, but I think yeah. they're going to be accounted for there in terms of what exactly is going on. Just like with the disciples and the resurrection. Was yeah, some, can we show that there's agreed, any that are true? Can we scholar, show that there's a there there? Secular scholars agree that the disciples had some type of experience with Christ. We just don't know what it was. I would even I would agree that that, that they have, they met some faith healer, cult leader, self-professed exorcist, and performing the exact same shtick that you know same hair color, same same that, that Bobby Tilton and uh, <laughs> Kenneth and Gloria Copeland and and all of those Benny Hinn, all those kind of people. He's just the first century version of that. And if people are this credulous now. In the age of enlightenment, can you imagine how gullible they were in the first century? Or how gullible they're going to be in 100 years from now? It is a sad thing that we seem to be going backwards. And I'm still debating people like yourself. <laughs> well, let's try to move on from there, everybody. And uh, unless you had anything to say there, uh, Stuart, uh, Ella Ron has a uh, 499, a question. Aaron, Muslim de declaration of faith starts with, there is no God and continues. Why do you think that is? <laughs> there is no God but Allah. And then I have a t-shirt to this effect that says, there is no God but Allah. Just kidding, there is no God. All right, well, let's move on from there. Elrond again says... And you can buy that t-shirt on evolfish.com. Awesome. Yeah, and, and uh, at the end of our closing statements, we'll definitely uh, give you guys a chance to... Uh, uh, tell us where we can find you at the links that we're going to have pinned in our descriptions. Elorant for four ninety nine again. This is for you, Aaron. I think you can hear me. Yeah, he's there. Aaron, a Muslim here. John Locke saved Western civilization from eugenics. He was a follower of Jesus. He based his ethics on Abrahamic tradition. Well, then he then he was his own enemy, because where was eugenics coming from at that time? I don't know. Where was it coming from? It was disproportionate breeding that was established by the church. The church was the one that was practicing eugenics. All right. I, I, I'm, I, I might have some insight here, people, but I did want to just kind of pry there as a, an innocent interlocutor. So Marty Comagello for $5. Stuart, why are you so anti-LGBTQ? Isn't that the opposite of being compassionate? When did I say that? I'm I never sure. said that. I, I think that Christianity paved the way for movements like LGBTQ to have the level of freedom that they have, or or go to the Me Too movement, for example. You know. Oh yes, Christianity with their back in the Roman Empire. Yeah, with it the, with their uh, support of Leviticus and men all of their prohibitions kind of against. And yeah, or, with their with their support of Leviticus eighteen, with Christ with Jesus never saying ever once. Hey, you remember what it says in Leviticus uh, eighteen? Ignore that. No, Jesus never did that. Jesus always only ever extolled the lack of virtue that we find in the Hebrew Bible. Isn't that sad? Right. So, um, at Tech State University, I found somebody who hates Jesus more than Aaron does. I don't hate Jesus. I hate injustice. We were there. And injustice includes injustice. lies, and Jesus is a lie. But it's I, incorrect. I, I found somebody when I was there. It was a boy transitioning to be a girl, and she kept running in front of great dialogue. We had big days out there. We had like 400 students out there at a time. TSU was going on fire. And uh, she kept interrupting the debates, yelling, Go to our website, ipissedonjesus.com. And sure enough, big website. I don't know how many fans selling merchandise. I mean, I, I just, just, you can't make this stuff up. Yeah, so I got a comment. Somebody mentioned in the comments about what I just said about how, how gullible people were 2,000 years ago. And the commenter said that we're actually worse now. And I kind of agree because... I read uh, Vincent Bugliosi's Helter Skelter. He was the prosecuting attorney of the Manson family. I have actually physically met the Manson family three times as a child because we lived in Los Angeles. 
And I, I read the book uh, in, in earnest, and I, I kind of get it. The, the people that were hanging out with Manson that thought that he could actually make their bus fly, that he was able to convince them of these, these miraculous things that he could do in the Age of Enlightenment, in the 1960s, all you need is a little bit of LSD and you could believe anything. I'm, I was surprised. V Vincent Bugliosi complained that it was difficult to find anybody who would testify against Manson because they all believed that he could read their minds and that he could do all of these miraculous things. And so it would, it would disqualify their credibility as witnesses, which is interesting because shit that, that you have to say now in order to get elected to public office would have in the 60s gotten you disqualified as a witness in a murder trial. But it, it, it does speak to how we can believe ridiculous shit in the 21st century that and, and just laugh at the fact that they would have believed it in the first. Oh, the amount of conspiracy theories. There, there hasn't been any more ever in our history than there is today. Agreed. So I uh, will just, uh, Gary, we'll just close it off there, fellas. Um, so, uh, Stuart, uh, you know, you referred to, uh, you know, somebody you knew who's transitioning as a she. So I think that answers the question uh, that you're not anti-LGBTQ, if that's what I got out of that. or No, I, I've had friends in my wedding, in my wedding party who are gay, who are some of my closest friends. And, you know, I was asked, okay, I'm going to go ahead and say this because it's 1030 and maybe some people got off so I, I can get a little bit more edgy but i was asked by a uh a, a, a girl who was marrying a close friend and she said oh you can't love people Stuart, who are lgbtq because you know your your bible is hateful and you hate them because they say they're bad people and going to hell and this that and the other and i i said that's ridiculous i i think that just because you perhaps don't think that somebody's lifestyle is the most flourishing for them just because you, you disagree with that or, or want to help them in that area. In no way does that mean that you're less loving towards them. Just like if my child, the one that is living in a lifestyle who I think is not most helpful for their flourishing, doesn't mean I'm going to love them less. I'm going to probably love them more than the child who I think is living this lifestyle that perhaps is helping them really flourish. So I know to many people, that sounds exclusive and what the Bible teaches, but in no way does that, I mean, if anything, it increases, it should increase love for the Christian and not a type of patronizing kind of love. I mean, like le legitimate, genuine love. So, so she understood that she, she, she's a really sharp woman and she got it. So. Well, hopefully that clears that up for you there, Marty. Uh, you, you know, I think Stuart's a good guy. Aaron's a great guy. You know, we're maybe I'm a good guy too. I mean, you know nothing about me. That's careful now, Ryan. Uh, no, you gotta be careful because nobody in your chat thinks anything nice. <laughs> well, yeah, that's that's all right for your them. Your chat is say, Reddit. <laughs> my chat is Reddit. Well, you guys calm down over there and you behave yourselves because. I am a nice guy. <laughs> Stuart's a nice guy. Arn's a nice guy. And uh, we don't really care for uh, people that are just trolling or being uh, general a-holes. Uh, so let's continue on. Uh, question. Oh, so yeah. Uh, exit dissolved. Two dollars. Stuart, how many eyewitnesses accounts of the Jesus raised? Oh, sorry. How many eyewitnesses accounts of raised Jesus in New Testament? Of raised Jesus? Jesus. Nine. All right. I think that is the uh, the answer there for the New Testament. So uh, let's carry on. And uh, I think yeah, that's yeah, your if answer. I had a question for I know I know that he won't answer it because he can't he can't answer it. Even if he knew the answer, he couldn't answer it. Uh, but I want to know why he believes this. And it would take an awful lot of self-reflection for him to come up with that. And I don't think he's capable of that right now. Not an insult. I, I sincerely don't think that you would be able to evaluate everything that I'm thinking about right now to come up with why you believe what you believe. Because I tried. I just couldn't. I had to walk away from all that shit. Well, maybe that's something we could even debate about down the road. But, uh, you know, uh, Stuart, if you had any thoughts on that, you know, and, uh, you know, in the next 10 seconds and we'll move on. When you're too, when you guys, when your audio goes on, does is, is it speaking over me every time? Because because I I feel like I'm uh, 
bottom of the totem pole here. <laughs> uh, yeah, unfortunately, I think because we have mics and preamps and, you know, I've got all these guitars and, just, and rock gear and all that stuff, you know, I can really drive my voice if I want to. So uh, I won't do that. Uh, well, I, I so I would, no, I, I think it's a very good question. Uh, for me, if there's no proof. There's no proof. If I came to this with proof, it would be a different question. For me, I do. I would lean on Pascal a little bit as my own response. I know, I know, you don't like that because I'm well, bringing. It's not that I don't like it. It's just it's stupid. Well, here's Pascal. I'm not saying Pascal's wager. Like his wager is dumb, and it's kind of. I, I think That's it's cool. fear based too. I, I like what he said, and I can't remember the pince that he said it in, but. You know, when he talks about the attractiveness of the gospel, and there's no way you would ever even consider trusting in God, better yet believing in him, if the gospel is not attractive to you first. And so I think for me, it's a matter of, I, I think there's just enough evidence to lead then to my experience and my belief and all the benefits that come from belief. Like there's endless amounts of, I, like my thesis was on positive psychology and the belief in God endless amounts like atheism i, I like you, endless as in zero what i like like as in as in non-starter as in like there's no benefit to to pretending things that are obviously not true no no there no there's benefits that's not what i said there's benefits to pretending things that are not true sure i wouldn't do that i you i think do. i think the placebo effect absolutely has a a serious effect on say for example you know medical drugs but i, for... I gotta say in all my arguments i've been doing this for like 25 years and it, it's funny to me how every discussion with a creationist always or with a christian always always brings up one that the 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 near-death experiences as if that means anything and then justification <laughs> for the placebo effect no no i so i did neither of those you you just did the placebo. Then I communicated, well, then I communicated poorly. I gave you a couple ideas there once. So for me, it's more a matter of I don't have proof, and yet I don't think your end has any level of proof either. Wait, wait. I I have to prove just I don't say, believe you. I don't think you can just say this is reality and that's it. Okay, like, I don't. But I but that's not my position. That's you argued for materialism, which again is both of us accepting that there is a material reality. You assume that there's a magical reality, which you cannot justify, and I do not assume the thing that you cannot substantiate. Okay, but what are you substantiating when it comes... The material to reality we both accept. I don't make assumptions outside of that. And nothing beyond, like, love, meaning, purpose... Love is not at beyond that. Love is chemical. I'm I'm just love is part of that. 30 seconds there, fellas. So, well, so more speaking personally, I think there is enough evidence. Like, I, I almost ditched my faith when I was a sophomore in college. Like, look, I'm a pastor's kid. The statistically 75% lose their faith. So I'm, I'm one of the 25%. Okay, so. I don't know why. But, but you think love is outside of physical universe? Yes, I think there's, there's more to love than just chemicals. And there isn't than just the evolutionary... But, but you are assuming what is not evidenced. No. These things... Okay, so you just said that love was outside of the physical universe. There is no evidence of that. You assumed that and said that that's what you believe, but there's no evidence to imply that. So you are stepping outside of the evidence to imagine something outside of this universe. No, no, no. Okay. <laughs> let's start all over again, and let's see how you wrap yourself up again. All right. Well, um, if you guys want to delve down that path again, that's fine. It, it is just a little funny that uh, James had messaged me, and he was like, hey, try to, you know, make sure that you get these fellas out, you know, around two hours and uh, try to respect their time. But uh, I messaged him back, and I was like, I warned them that if they kept riffing, we were going to keep going. Uh, and I just messaged him now, and I was like, we're a quarter of the Super Chats through and the they're still riffing uh so you know this is this is up to you fellas if you yeah. want to go down that path but we it, can it, keep going it, it, it's i i i have other shit that i need to be doing right now but 
fine, fuck it, we'll just do this. At, wait, are, are you at 9.30? You, yeah, you're at 9.30, aren't you? I'm at 9.30. I've been working on another project for like five days. A video that I thought was going to be recorded four days ago, but it's taking me longer than I expected. Eat that. I feel I feel you. I was I, I, I've been doing two days of jamming and we've been working on space trucking by Deep Purple and I've just been screaming my head off. So I'm surprised I even have a voice to to even speak with. Uh are you doing Ian Gillian? <laughs> yeah Yeah, I am, I'll tell you. <laughs> I won't do it right now because I I can't okay. I can't adjust the levels to make sure that's going to be cool. Uh, but I will close it off with a cool song. Ella Rond, and uh, he's coming in for four ninety nine. Question, Aaron, is 2 plus 2 equals 4 falsifiable? What do you think? I don't do math. I like to stay in my lane. Uh, and I've talked to mathematicians who say that 2 plus 2 can equal 5 depending on certain values of 2. And I'm like, the fuck are you even talking about? <laughs> I think that might be over most people's heads here. I mean, I was taught 2 plus 2 equals 2. And, you know, yep. as as yep. Stuart mentioned earlier about drugs, like, you know, if, if your drug dealer was like 2 plus 2 equals 5, that's fine. All right. Yeah. <laughs> and, and that's why I that's why I started to embrace the thing about when you say that you're going to prove something, you can't prove it mathematically. This is why science doesn't prove anything mathematically. The best that you can do is in a different context. You can prove by an overwhelming preponderance of evidence beyond reasonable doubt. That I can do. And so when people tell me, you know, that evolution's not a thing, I can absolutely prove by an overwhelming preponderance of evidence beyond reasonable doubt that evolution is real and a thing, and that creationism is nothing but frauds, falsehoods, and fallacies with no truth to it, period, end of statement. I can absolutely prove both of those things. The sad thing is people want to make believe so badly, they don't care. They will tell me straight to my face that they don't care what the truth is. They're going to believe it anyway. Well, this next question is coming in for Stuart. And Mc, uh, so this is from Stephanie McGuire for $5. Stuart, why does the Old Testament God that abhors human sacrifice accept his chosen people to accept human sacrifice as the ultimate atonement for sin? Yeah, there were a lot of those different types of pagan cults. There was Moloch. There was all different types where, you know, you had all these store, you know, historical inventions, but also the no, the historically accurate. You have Moloch and parents having to bring their babies and put on the molten hot lava hands when they would heat up the statue of Moloch, and then the parents would have to get taken out of the city as the screams of the babies were so intense. So yes, they would sacrifice for sins or just sacrifice in general to their gods. Um, but in no way does that disprove the Christian God. You're, you're, the people that you have in your chat are so very fortunate that they will never have an opportunity to face me in a situation where they <laughs> will have to be accountable. I, I sometimes feel similarly. <laughs> you know, I see some of the... Because they just say a whole bunch of shit that I could prove wrong in a moment. And it's just there's too many of them to even list, and I'm not going to name them because then they'll just all be spouting that shit. But it looks like... Because I did this an hour or two ago, it just looked like everybody, hey, let's say the stupidest thing we can in the chat. Well, hopefully we have a few of our mods in the chat because I can't keep an eye on all of it. And also, uh, if you, you have a few mods future. working in this chat, then you have a fuck ton of idiots. <laughs> Boasting here. Jumping in my Discord right now. Uh, anyways, no, I, yeah, hopefully, uh, hopefully you guys are working a little bit in the super chats there and uh, going through our live feed. But uh, once again, keep it friendly, everybody. And uh, once again, it's no skin off our back. So uh, this is another one for Stuart. Anybody, that, anybody that's in the chat that wants to say that, because you know, there are a lot of people I'm noticing this, that, that say that I can't prove evolution. Shut Ah. Yes, I absolutely can. There's a trick to it, though. You have to be able to communicate in a Socratic interaction. Now, I can do it in as little as, as a couple dozen mutual exchanges. But when I have to correct the misinformation that you have 
and then establish the basics. And I have to confirm that you understand the basics before we move on to the next level. That means that when I ask you questions, you have to answer them. And my experience over the last 25 years that I've been doing this is that believers habitually refuse to answer direct questions because they want to believe more than to know the truth. That's the problem. So they won't answer at all. I think it would be interesting to maybe even see that breakdown, you know, even just for even if we had a devil's advocate uh, to see how that breakdown of uh, that interaction happens. Uh, but let's move on here. Whoa, 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 whoa. Technically, Aaron is not allowed to do that whatsoever. I like Aaron and I like listening to him, so I allow him to do that. No other atheist or anybody debating. This, this shows how much I like Aaron. Would I ever allow to do that? I would push Ryan right out of his seat until he actually stopped and said, equal time here. <laughs> but I enjoy listening to Aaron. So I let him get away, you know, I, I, I let him push and go, you know, and I like that he actually asked me questions here at the end. I, I do appreciate that, that it was, that was personal, but I can't get my points off about the resurrection or reliability of the gospels. If oh, yeah. I'm going to interrupt. I'm sorry about that. No, I don't mean to be interrupting you right now. I just meant like as a separate idea, right? That's the thing. Oh, no, no, that... <laughs> well, But we're oh, not talking about the oh, resurrection of the Bible. We're talking about evolution. We're talking about things that are real. That's fantastic. Wait, what? <laughs> so let's uh let's go back to the super chats uh this was for you Stuart. so i mean we should really be asking you the question we just got into a different uh different direction there Stuart. um yeah that was the one about uh atonement for sin Stuart. i don't believe you are for real in your belief I don't know if I like that one so much. Can you prove you actually believe the Bible and practice your religion? Ooh, is this a, is this a uh, ad hominem, if you will, here? I think they're asking if you're a devil's advocate. Uh, you know, are you are I mean, you legit, Stuart? I know I keep making it sound like I'm a I'm I'm a proficient author and writer, but I consider titling a book in the future "One Step Away from Atheism." Because I've had so many people say to me, "Whoa, you're you're like inches from atheism." Yeah, my, I've my even had a couple. I've, I've even had a couple guys. I've, I've had a couple guys come on uh, different podcasts and say, "Yeah, I am here to convert you to atheism." So I guess there's a lot no, of people. Nobody, not... nobody says that. Oh, they said that. They said nobody that. says I'm going to convert you to atheism. Yeah, yeah. No, nobody yeah. knows what the fuck they're talking about. <laughs> Well, so, so I, go, I, I, how do you I, convert to non-belief? Well, you you know what they were saying, Conver converting out of mind into something else, whatever it might but they, be. But they don't. They, but they wouldn't say convert to atheism. That's stupid. If somebody says that they're going to convert you to atheism, then they don't even know their own argument. Well, uh, let's carry on from there. Uh, I think Stewart's made his point, and Aaron has made his point. So let's carry on. Fedor Mephitis for five dollars. Does Aaron believe that the beasts of Daniel seven are to be taken literally? Daniel was largely dreams, so I don't take any of that literally. I mean, most a whole lot of the Bible was fucking. I don't know whether it was just dreams or it was drug-induced dreams or dreams inspired by stupidity. I don't know. But it, it, there's a whole lot of it that was just dreams and therefore doesn't have any validity at all. If I wrote down all the fucking dreams that I've had that I thought meant something to me and then I wrote them down in a book for other people to interpret as if it should have the same meaning for them, that'd be awfully confusing. But that's how the Bible is written. This is It was written by mystics. It was written by people who thought that dreams were God's way of communicating with people, which means that God is inept. All right. Well, for the sake of time, everybody, and, uh, you know, to everybody, hit the like button. What are you doing? We got still over a thousand people watching this and only 500 likes. Hit that like button if you enjoy what you're hearing here tonight. I think we've got two very amicable speakers on our side here and uh, good representative uh, representative sides of uh, our yeah, arguments. I'll give you I'll give you a credit for that, Stuart. I will. 
because modern day debate has pitted me up against some real idiots. <laughs> I think I think you guys are both swell fellas. Uh, this has been a lot of fun. Uh, I'm not going to talk about any of the uh, of the other people. I'm I've not going to name any names. Um, <laughs> but <laughs> this but has been a damn. great. <laughs> yeah, no. <It's> just... <laughs> Yeah, I, I don't know what to say, fellas. Uh, we'll carry on. And, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to set a one-minute timer, and I'm going to try to keep the questions towards, you know, the people that they're asked to. So good day to you, sir, for $20 Canadian. Oh, Canada. Thank you for your $20 Canadian. To correct Stuart, Jesus, and Mark 16, 18. Uh, should I do my preacher voice? I think I should. Let's just, let's just get the will questions. Pick I'm, up I'm snakes seeing a with... lot of questions showing up in the chat, but I'm guessing they don't. They, you don't read them unless they pay something. There's a lot of questions, but yeah, we're gonna read just the super chats because there's a ton of them still. And yep. uh, I got a quote here from Mark sixteen eighteen, and Brian, I'm, I'm ready to rip. Do we? Ha how many of these do we have to ask? How many of these questions do we have to get to? All kinds, but uh, you know, we'll we'll tear through them. Like I said, I'm gonna set a one minute timer. Let's go. It's ten forty six. What time are we going till? I'm at 11:46, so like. Yeah, yeah. Well, I, yeah. where are you? How dare you? I'm in Nova Scotia, so like you know. I was just about to say that. My my launch into this whole thing, and uh, you know, kind of my kick in the butt was actually running into Shannon Q and Pologia, uh, and on their. Why are you on this show? On their anniversary, and they paid for me and my wife's drinks. Uh, you know, it was very kind of them, and I I super enjoyed sitting down and chatting with them. I thought they were uh, really cool yeah. for doing that. Uh, I, I really, uh, I really enjoy uh, Paul and Shannon Q. Uh, oh, they just were fantastic sincerely people. for a number of reasons. So I just, I just wanted to get that on. You know, I don't that I said that. I guess. No, they, I like them. Yeah, they kicked me in the butt. They messaged Jimmy, and they, you know, they were like, "Hey, you know, uh, you know, Ryan's trying to get a hold of you," and then that kind of got me kind of thinking, well, I, I should see what happened with my email that I sent to James because he never responded to me. And then I checked my junk email and I was like, he responded to me within a week of me sending him an email saying, hey, I think I want to help you out here. Um, and it was in my junk email and I missed it completely. So, uh, you know, I, I would have been on here a lot sooner and figuring out uh, how to actually be good at this a lot sooner. Had, uh, had that You're great. Got 10 minutes let's go let's roll uh good day to you i think sir. you're running out of stewart's patience <laughs> sorry Stuart. to correct Stuart. Yep. all right sorry, sorry I... oh. it's all good they will pick up the snakes with the hands and then they will drink deadly poison it will not hurt them at all they will I place the hands on sick people ones, and they will me. get well <laughs> that is my preacher voice so he is quoting from mark mark 16 18 saying that they did uh, in the New Testament, I think Mark is from, uh, preach about uh, being able to handle deadly snakes. Uh, thoughts on that or want to carry on? Uh, carry on. Mark 16 is maybe not even in the Bible. Oh, <laughs> all right. Thank you. Fortitude balance of 499 euro. If God really wrote the Bible and it is his word, why is there a big universe beyond our world? If there was life on Mars, he should have said so. Yeah, there's probably not, there's probably no humans on Mars. Next. All righty. Uh, Aaron's back there getting out of their snake. But uh, yeah, we're going to carry on with the super chats, everybody. And sorry uh, if we're being super brief with your super chat, but I think we've used the super chats to get into all kinds of nuance uh, in these guys' thoughts on the individual discussion. So Aaron is back. So uh, yeah, you guys were calling for a venomous one. So I was going to go grab a venomous one, but she's running and hiding. <laughs> is she toothless new no. all right new. well yeah uh, from six fangs on either side so this one from eleron again question to Stuart: on which dmt trip did machine elves tell you that thousands of muslims are becoming christians uh eleron i think that's kind of uh just uh not really worth answering but uh thanks for the 499 we want to carry on and respect these fellas time because we've gotten all kinds of ideas out tonight go back in the debate if you missed anything because uh, i think we've really uh, expelled uh what we think for tonight frank morning tree 199 Aaron, thanks for fighting for a rational world well thank you frank for your fan super chat we always appreciate a little bit of support for the speakers who are here on their own time that's amazing that uh you would contribute nine Five ninety five dollars. What do you both think 
of Kenneth Humphrey's idea that not only was Jesus mythological, but so was Paul, that both were literally characters. I don't um, believe that Paul. I don't believe that Paul was fictional at, at, at all. I don't actually believe that Jesus was entirely fictional. I think that he was largely so, and that Paul is a big part of that, but right. that he wasn't entirely so. And I don't believe that Paul was was fictional at all. All right. And your thoughts there, Stuart? And we'll move on. Agreed. Other than I think Christus is a specific Christ that the Christians worshipped. All right, let's carry on. Rusty Colon for $5 Canadian. Stuart, would, uh, why would an all-powerful supreme being allow vastly different interpretations of his commands that lead to eternal torture and damnation? First of all, there's an orthodox faith that 34% of Christians understand and agree on. Secondly, the Ten Commandments, for example, I, I don't think there's too much misinterpretation around the, the Ten Commandments or the Sermon on oh, the Mount. Oh, yeah, there is, depending on whether... Are you talking about Exodus 20 or Exodus 34? <laughs> okay, there is. There's some. But what what does this guy expect? Like, like what, what does he desire? He, he wants all of our brains fixed perfectly to have a perfect, exact understanding of every word in the English, you know, dictionary. So, no, there's going to be different interpretations and understanding but ultimately if you misunderstand what murder means and you kill it's killing instead of murdering or it, i'm pretty sure that's not going to send you to hell no sin ultimately is going to send you to hell it's Except a matter the of sin of disbelief well yeah you brought that up earlier all right well let's carry on fellas uh we got i like it ryan i like it ryan i'm trying to keep you guys going because i know I, like you, I know you want to carry on there Stuart. Right. This is technically venomous. Ooh. Just technically. I like I like the wristband. That's what I'm all after, you know? But there it is. Hell I'm bent, holding a venomous snake. For leather. Look at that go. All <laughs> right. I, I picked that we, that album up a few weeks ago. Uh, my buddy before he uh, left. Hell bent for leather? Oh, yeah, man. I love, I love Priest. I was going to say, I got Machine Head, and then I uh, ordered in Unleashed in the East. Uh, my buddy left me his record player before he moved away to Ontario. He's actually the rhythm player on all the uh, lovely tracks that everybody hears on Modern Day Debate when I'm hosting because uh, uh, I'll use it as a way to promote my music. You are, you are such an anachronism. You are way too young to be into the music you like. Uh, yeah, you should have seen me when I was in grade seven and I was like, ooh, I like Buddy Holly. I made my way into Queen. <laughs> I made my way into Queen, and every day I would come home, and I was 15, and I'd be singing, you know, another one bites the dust. Anyways, I gotta be careful. But uh, eventually, I got into Dio and Rob Halford and all them good high screaming vocalists. And uh, me and my old music teacher, we ended up linking back together, and we're doing a, a a really cool act right now, we're doing Rainbow and dio and you know heaven and rainbow hell and dio well rainbow with dio as the frontman of course okay. you know a stargazer is my favorite tune so i mean i've been ripping that one and screaming it out but i gotta be good here everybody you're getting me distracted i, I gotta tell you you're talking you're doing a different show right now <laughs> you're getting me distracted on the metal my friend all right so <laughs> uh Aaron, if your snakes could talk what could what would they say I think they would say, holy diva. Hello, <laughs> <laughs> Rod, for $1.99. Uh, Stuart just stepped out, so let's find another one for Aaron. Um, Aaron, you are a good person. Respect, sir, from Ella Rod for $1.99. Well, thank you. Uh, Charles Lair for $1.99. Ryan, indeed, you are goated. Well, whatever that means. I mean, I think that's a good thing. Um, you know, I, I, I can scream a good tune. That's good. I'll, I'll put something on for the end of uh, the show. Um, oh, easy walks for $2. How can Aaron hail to Satan and not believe in God? Because in the Satanic Temple, when you hail Satan, you, you hail yourself. Because it's about self-empowerment. We don't believe in a literal Satan, so... And, and very often, when you hear people say, Hail Satan, listen for a moment longer, they'll say, Hail Satan, and then say, Hail thyself. All right. Hopefully that answers your question. Easy walks. Elorant for $1.99. Aaron, why are you arguing for alt, uh, Altarian ethics? You'd, uh, for sorry. Who? You, uh, you, you'd, you'd, utilitarian ethics? 
utilitarian. That's what I'm utilitarian. Sorry, I I pronounced it wrong. I uh, I had to zoom in here. I should be wearing my glasses because I'm, I'm... older than I appear. <laughs> Yeah, you're saying that to me. <laughs> you're barely pubescent compared to me. It doesn't matter. Sorry, uh, I have no sir. idea. <laughs> I, I, I consider myself utilitarian. So the ethics of what is required of society would be utilitarian. I I don't know. what I didn't see the original question. I, I, I would ask the person to paraphrase it if I had that opportunity, but I'm given that this is the one time I'm going to hear this question, that's the best way I can answer it. I'm going to be, did, did it, I interpret it as pragmatic and I'm, I'm a pragmatist. So I'm going to interpret it that way. All right. Well, let's carry on. Elorant for 499. Aaron said Muslims are leaving Islam in West. I am non Western born Muslim, and sometimes they try to even excommunicate me by accusing me of being liberal. You, you know, you're making inroads when they accuse you of that. Yeah. But I'm not a liberal, I'm a leftist. And, and so people try to accuse me of being a liberal. I'm like, no, 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 you need to keep going. All right, well, let's carry on there. Stuart's back. Thanks, Stuart, for coming back. Aaron, if you need to take a little washroom break, uh, grab a drink. No, I just, I just urinated right here in my chair. It'll be fine. <laughs> Aaron's got a bottle, everybody. That's fine. He's a professional. <laughs> he's, got a, he's got an elegant filtration system hooked up to him right now, built into his chair. It's fine. All right, so Elrond for $1.99. Stuart, soul is a metaphysical self. It's not matter. Yeah, agreed. All right. Okay, that was the question I was asking before. And as I said, when I when I talked to a number of, of neuroscientists and neurophilosophers, specifically Daniel Dennett and Patricia Churchland, they they go on about and the neuroscientists did as well. There's six of them. I can't remember all their names, but they but they all say there's no support at all for mind body dualism. There just simply flat out is not a soul. All right, you want to close this out there, Stuart? Nope. No. All right. Well, that's the ending thoughts there. Uh, Lord as Stannis, a dollar ninety a nine. How many people does God kill, and why so many? It's a bit of a loaded question, but you guys can address it if you'd like. Where is the empirical proof that God kills so many people? All right. Well, we don't have empirical proof. All we have is the mythology. Exactly. And we we have estimates, you know, that, that uh, God killed everybody on Earth at a given moment. It was, it was the 24th century BCE. So we have to estimate what the population of the planet is, minus eight. Would you have been okay if God killed the Nazis before they brutally killed six million Jews? Would I have been okay if God killed bad people instead of killing everybody for no fucking reason? Are you sure you Who's, want to ask me that loaded question? Every, whoa, whoa, whoa. Who said everybody is, was not bad? Because that's you, what the, you just said everybody. But bad so, actions, thoughts, and behaviors. Every doe in South America, every puppy in north america it doesn't matter god apparently had some issue with a handful of people in the nor in the middle east being too noisy so he decided that that the only thing he could do because god doesn't know how to do problem solving he decided the only thing that he could do was to kill everybody everywhere everything everywhere to get rid of these handful of people in the middle east now he could have blinked them all into the cornfield. He could, like other gods have done on the Twilight Zone. He could have done a number of other things. But no, he went for the most costly, ridiculous, over-the-top, excessively cruel, stupid kind of act that he possibly could. Why? Because the people who made up this story experienced a flood in their neighborhood and decided to blame it on the gods. Well, I believe in the local flood, so I don't, I don't agree with... Okay, and, so you believe in the flood of Shurapak in 2900 BCE? Let's let Stuart did, pose it out where it is for him there. You did not answer my question, though. Oh, well, then we'll pass it okay. back. What's your question there, Stuart? About killing Nazis. 
The which, which not the the ones in control in control of the GOP now or the ones from a century ago? All right, let's go on. Okay. <laughs> oh, right. Before we get into the all the jargon, imaginative avenue twenty dollars, guys. Let me ask a hypothetical in the internet. There's a secretive organization called the CSP Foundation. They hunt down and contain anomalies. If it is real. If it is reasonable to say it is real, given its attributes, is it real? This no. is a strange one. It's a strange one. I think I read it with the right tone, honestly. <laughs> yeah, I, I, people have accused me of of, uh, of endorsing verificationism, and therefore I'm supposed to belong to some philosophical thing that lost. Uh, lost popularity in the 19th century but i don't i i do however before i assume that anything is true i want to be able to show that there is some truth to it so to that degree yeah i want to be able to verify before i declare before i buy into something all right well let's move on from there uh Elrond said soul affects your brain and your brain affects your soul uh i think we've already kind of touched that there on is this. no such thing as a soul yeah, I was going to say, I think, Elrond, we've touched uh, enough on that subject and kind of figured out where our debaters disagree uh, on that. Yeah, I, I, I will admit that I have a soul when I'm listening to really extremely good blues guitar. But otherwise, no. Oh, we have a Hendrix fan. Look at that. That's good stuff, too. Uh, <laughs> uh, a best star, four ninety nine. When Stuart made an excuse for Matt 1628 as... Uh, he was talking about events in 70 AD shows he is full of something that is not the Holy Ghost. See verse 27. Don't put quotations unless you want my preacher voice. What are you doing? <laughs> I don't know if there's really a question there, Stuart. It's kind of like a proclamation. So, I mean, you know, people who heard that question, you can kind of look into that. Uh, say, saying you're making an excuse for Matt 1628. Thoughts? I don't have verse 27 in front of me. All right. It's no problem. I, I'm sure we'll, uh, we'll get that expounded on some other time. Uh, I'm still right reading now. your chats and I'm seeing people that don't know what punctuation means, who also think that just making an assertion is establishing a fact. Oh, oh, the people that don't know what punctuation means. And then they submit Ooh. the super chats and I have to read them. <laughs> I'm trying to wonder, like, what is the flow here? What is the flow? All right, so, so <laughs> clip that, everybody. That's that's what I want you to gather from this. Punctuation, very important. Um, let's continue on. Elrond, soul plus brain is why we're here for training. Um, we, like I said, we've already answered enough questions about the soul, Elrond, so I appreciate your super chat, but we want to get these fellas out here at somewhat a decent hour, and uh, we're not doing that as it goes. So, uh, Stu, from Lord Stannis uh, for four ninety nine, can you read about how the biblical God was developed from a polytheistic to monotheistic? This is Yahwehism. What are your thoughts on this? So it was developed from polytheistic to monotheistic. I, there was no, there was there was no stealing from any type of polytheism. I, I don't see any evidence for that, and I've heard that okay. once before. But there's no evidence that somehow monotheism stole from polytheism. And okay, so there's the fact that Judaism was originally polytheistic. So that fact in evidence is one of the ones that he's regret that he's uh, uh, just simply ignoring uh, and then there's the the origin uh that around the the origin of judaism there was the mesopotamian religions there was the Perm the, the persian religions egyptians and so forth and some of those were toying with monotheism so the persians had a monotheistic religion and the egyptians had a monotheistic religion and so Judaism was being partially influenced by that. That's another fact in evidence that uh, that Stuart is overlooking. So when he says there is no fact, he means that actually that there is multiple facts in evidence. He just doesn't know about them yet. I took a course on the comparative history of world religions. I suggest, Stuart, that you do the same. I had a wonderful instructor on that, and that, that seems to make all the difference. Ten seconds. Uh, my 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 son took the the same course that I did with a different instructor after I did and said that the class uh, sucked because my son sat through the class with me 
we had a Methodist instructor who had a, who had a doctorate in theology and had actually personally been to all of these different holy uh, structures across Asia and so forth. Uh, but the next guy after him was a Southern Baptist preacher who had never been outside of the United States. And my son said that that class just absolutely sucked. All right. So, Stu, that was for you. So uh, I'll, I'll give you up to a minute to close us out on that one there uh, without interruption. So uh, uh, what are your thoughts there? Um, no, the Judeo, it, it, was, it was always worshipped. The Judeo-Christian God was always worshipped as a monotheistic God. Now, were there influences like Aaron mentioned in the sense of were there dabbling in, in potential ideas of polytheism? Potentially. But no, there's no show, – show me any type of paper anywhere, any scholarly ancient document talking about that the Jews worshipped many gods at once. And I'll – Okay. Do. Yeah, no, not, not a problem. If you, you visit me an email, I'll be able to produce that. And in the meantime, Spider33 – I shouldn't be addressing the people in your chat because they're all fucking idiots. Calling me an old childless snake man after having raised five oh. kids, two of them by myself. Why are your chat people all such idiots? That I have no control over. That's kind of one of those <laughs> <laughs> YouTube things. I, you know, you fellas choose to uh, leave the mark on the planet that you want, but uh, just just know that. Uh, you know, if you're not being constructive, well, then that's it's a tautology. You're being just that. So, Al Aran, 199. Yes, they will become Muslim. Uh, Al Madilia. Um, not sure what we got there. Jason Jones, two dollars. Wrong pew research. Uh, wrong pew. Research better. Sorry, you did have punctuation. I'm not sure what they're referring to there with the uh, uh, pew research being wrong. No. All right. Sorry, Jason. We've lost that point. Uh, you know, that's coming gone. So, uh, Lord DeSantis, uh, Lord DeSantis, sorry. I, <laughs> you know what? <laughs> I've been watching too much. It's been watching too much political jargon trying to find these political speakers. So, you know what? Don't blame me. Lord Stannis, dollar four ninety nine. Stu, if your father Cliff came to you and said, Stu, God has told me to take you up the hill and sacrifice you, what is your reaction to this? I'd ask which God did that ever and which book commanded that ever. Because Genesis chapter 22, clearly Abraham tells the servants we will be back. Clearly, God will provide. So there was never any question of somehow him going to stab his son and call it quits in the relationship. All right. Well, let's carry on. Yahoo again for $2 Canadian. He says, Stu, your audio cuts out because of your speakers. So, yeah, if you have uh, speakers in your room, uh, you know, and not in-ear monitors, it can sometimes... Uh, uh, cut into your microphone when you're trying to speak. So that could be... It, it, by the way, and I'm not getting on Aaron for this. Oh, there he getting... is. We're getting a close-up. Hi, Stuart. Some of the portable atheists, the atheists who just are atheists because of daddy being mean growing up or, or a bumper sticker that they read. I A Genesis 22 type passage with Abraham and Isaac, Like that's what I'm talking about in terms of they haven't done any looking into what that passage is actually about. What the meaning is, for example, like it's coming out of Genesis, for example. So, so you should be really looking into what the, the narrative structure is and what the meaning is. But then secondly, contextually speaking, thirdly, the Hebrew. And this is not me trying to dance at all. Like I studied this in seminary and it is so clear that in no sense is this an example of child murder. <laughs> so this is a perfect example of what I'm stating when it comes to when Aaron says just to read the Bible and don't BS around it. I hate to say it, but but this is an example of everybody interprets. <laughs> How are you going to interpret? I don't are mean... you going to interpret correctly, closest to context or not? I don't mean to laugh, but uh, the, the, the question about, you know, or the advice about your audio cutting out. And the next thing we know, we're talking about murder. That's what kind of set me off. I was like, this was about your audio. And then <laughs> it, it happens, everybody. We're back on topic. That's fine. Ella Ron, 499. Uh, that was already asked, actually, while you were on break. That was for Aaron. Um, that's for 
uh, Elleron dollar ninety nine. Aaron, lack of kindness will be your weakest point. As uh, kind of nah, I shouldn't have read that. Sorry, that's I'm just kind of reading them as they come in. That's not really a question. I've been kind. You have oh, no I idea the amount kind. of patience that I've exhibited for this. I think everybody's being good tonight. I Aaron is very kind for an atheist, all right? So you leave him alone. For for a human being, I love all of you fellows. You're great. Von what is, Zoom. Good love, Ryan. You you calm down. Don't you pull me Tell everybody you, you better explain what that means. Nine ninety nine. <laughs> I love watching you guys talk. A nine ninety nine question for Stuart. Why believe in an empty tomb when victims of crucifixion were left to rot or be eaten? Yeah, not in a massive grave with with the stature of a Jesus Christ figure. A common grave would have been for somebody who was completely not known. He wouldn't have been tried like Jesus was tried. So, All right. Or the way that, that Josephus describes it, which I and I don't add, I don't defend anything that Robert Price says because he and I are politically at, at ends. But I, I did read an interesting thing from Robert Price about... Uh, the interpretation of Josephus as compared to Luke, that there's a point where Josephus Bar Matthias can be interpreted as uh, Joseph, his by his Hebrew name, could be interpreted as Joseph uh, of Arimathea. And the, the way that Bob Price puts this, I, it was interesting to read the two captions together and realize that this is the same story being told from two different perspectives. Hmm. I had to be impressed with the way that he drew this extrapolation. I'm not saying it's legis- that it's necessarily valid, but it do- it did seem to me to be the way he presented his argument. And as I said, Bob Price and I, I, I liked the guy for a long time. He and I are politically at odds. But I, I did like this one argument that he made about that. What were the different angles? The way that that uh, jo- um, Joseph Bar Matthias, which would be Joseph of Ar- Arimathea, the way that he shows up and he has three friends who were who were on the cross, and then he goes to Titus rather than uh, Pilate. He goes to Titus, who was actually the person in charge at that time, and he begs to have his free th- free, his three friends taken down. And then two of them live, and then one of them died. And it just the 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 way that he he tells the story when you re, when you realize when you read Josephus through the eyes of Bob Price, and then you read Luke, it does read as if it's the same scene, seen from two sides, or you know from either perspective. That yet Luke is writing about the same scene as Josephus is, not Joseph of Arimathea. But Josephus Bar Matthias. All right. Uh, the or Joseph Bar Matthias. Question was for you there, Stuart. So you want to close this out on that thought there? I can't remember what it was. Oh, it's all right. That's all right. Uh, you know, the uh, the short term gets a little bit fuzzy when these things get a little bit longer, everybody. So that's what you get for pouring in your super chats like that. Uh, El Arant, uh, $1.99. The crux of his question is Christians aren't evil, Aaron. I never said they were evil. Okay, being deceived doesn't mean evil. I'm sorry that you believe in a lie, and I'd be happy to help you out with that. But that's your problem. It's not that you're evil, it's you're you're deceived. I just don't understand why John Lennon wasn't right. He was right. He was atheist. Yeah, when he exactly when he said in 1966 in Time magazine, as as the U.S. gets more scientific, we will see religion go. I am certain of it, and the opposite happened. Yeah, as, that is that that is upsetting. I can't tell you how much as science has increased. I mean, as somebody who grew up in that time period, who looked to you know Star Trek and so forth as like okay, we're we're making advancements. We're learning the the errors of our old ways. We're learning the new truths. You know, and we're, we're, we're going to get better. That's what I thought we were doing. And then we elected Trump. <laughs> yeah. Trump in his one and two chronicles. Yeah. Are we talking about where they, they, they wear the mark of the, the, 
mark of the beast on their forehead and it says M A G A. I still got a guy wearing a MAGA hat around town. So it's amazing. He's like the nicest guy in the world. So if anybody ever goes after him, they should feel very poorly. Yeah, my my mother told me that that Trump was still president, and I I made her sign a document that if by September of last year, if Trump is still in Mar-a-Lago and Biden is still in the White House, will she admit that her news sources were wrong? And she signed that, and then I pulled it out in September, late late September. I pulled that out. And went, you, you remember signing this? And she said, you'll find out eventually. <laughs> okay, so you just don't stand by your own word at all. <laughs> yeah, and so now she is in a nursing home uh, with dementia because Ooh. that's what leads to that. <laughs> Fox News does. All right. Well, let's evidently let's carry on there, everybody. And uh, sorry to hear that as I pop back in. I left on uh, what would seem to be a happy note for me as I was like, oh, let me go use the washroom right quick. John Lennon, yeah, he made some great music. And I come back, and then you left me and Stuart alone. <sighs> but you guys, you know what? I came back, and you guys were behaving, <laughs> and that's better than I could ask from my children and some of the other people I've hosted on here when I've had to pop out and use the washroom. And I come back, and I'm like, who's biting whose head off? What's going on here, Bice? All right, so in defense, uh, wait, how many questions are left? Just a Not few to- more. We're getting to the wrap up here. And defense okay. of the gospel. I'm going to need another beer because I can tell because he's that was an hour ago that he said a few more. Of the last yeah, time. honestly. Yeah. Well, I'm trying my best. It's not, don't worry, Ryan. It's not my fault. I it's keep, only sixty percent your fault. I, Forty percent. I've said know. ten seconds, fifteen seconds, <laughs> ten seconds here, fellas. Thirty seconds there, and then like five minutes later, you guys have finished up on your point. I don't want to cut you off. I mean, I want you guys to be able to get your ideas out there and what you what you're thinking. Uh, yeah, well, you've been talking some School of Rock, too, mister. I well, I had to do what I had to do, you know? Yeah, you are an anachronism. There's nobody with a face that lo- should look that young that likes the music that you do. Wow. <laughs> For you. Uh, that's that's all right. I was going to say, yeah, anybody who likes uh, likes what I do as far as, like, the uh, the modern-day debate, you can check me out on Facebook. I got a group called Light and Shade. We mostly just do, like, Led Zeppelin covers and... You know, I think the last clip I put up was like Stairway to Heaven or Over the Hills and Far Away or some nonsense like that. All right, stop That's really me. old shit, man. I, I love it, though. You know, I like I like that explosive vocal stuff. And it's funny. Yeah, because... it's, and then you two talk about the uh, I, I am no musician, although I like my Keith Green. Aaron may know who Keith Green is. No, neither of you guys know. Makes me sad. How about uh, the brother of Hank Green? He was a. Uh, <laughs> That's he was John Green. Tammy Faye's favorite singer. Did you see Tammy Faye? Tell me you saw. Oh, Arn, you got to watch Tammy Faye. You know, it's uh Tammy Faye? Tammy Faye, you know that evangelical leader back Tammy, in Tammy the- Jim and Tammy Baker? No, it's definitely Tammy Faye. It's Tammy Faye Baker. I used to watch them all the time. Yeah, yeah, whenever yeah. I wanted to get whenever I really wanted to get pissed off, I would watch Jim and Tammy Faye Baker. Bro, you gotta watch the movie. Jessica Chastain just won the Best Actress for it last year. I can't believe you haven't seen it. You gotta let me know what you think of it. You're you're gonna love it. It's gonna... <laughs> it was so irritating. I remember, I remember watching this this one show where they said, "Is and this was like 1982, and they 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 brought in these the people that used to work for Gary Gygax, and they said, "Is Dungeons and Dragons a satanic organization?" And the answer straight up, no. In matter of fact, we've even hired a Catholic priest. To make sure that nothing that we that we posted in our publications could possibly be interpreted as satanic, and so she grabs the camera, Tammy Faye does, and says, "See, Dungeons and Dragons is willfully a just a satanic organization." I'm like, "But that's what evangelicalism is, lies. That's it. That's that's just lies. They yeah. had they had bought they they had they had." Um, what the fuck? The old codger that just died. The the one that always, uh, always Falwell, does are you thinking? stupid you shit know? against hating people. What what was his name? Jer- was it Jerry Falwell that just passed away? Was that no no no? It was the one after him. They, they, it it was uh. Paul Stanley. No. 
<laughs> the, I don't the think one Paul where there was there was a lot of memes about it though basically the, 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 the Christian coalition the, the 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 one that was running the 700 Pat Robertson that was it I remember the memes yeah yes. the one who told his his 30,000 some odd followers in 1993 or four to go out and kill homosexuals where you find them in order to prevent earthquakes that guy yeah, I, for, I forgot where I was going with that. That's all right. We 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 launched from music. Yeah, well, yeah he. You know, I saw him on Jim and Tammy Faye's show, and he was showing Ozzy Osbourne's "Speak of the Devil," and he was talking about how this is all satanic music. And I'm like, and I'm like Ozzy's like spitting great jelly out of his mouth for a for a fucking studio album. Why do you have to like over dramatize everything? Because they they have to lie. They have to keep people scared in order to keep the donations coming in. And that was the foundation for Fox News. Well, let's carry on with the Super Chats there, fellas. But uh, I think that's a true debate uh, that we should have there is, uh, yeah, you know, who is the better front man, Ozzy or Dio? I mean, Ellen Gillen did that one album with uh, Sabbath and so did uh, Rob Halford. But I think Dio and Ozzy, that's the real debate right there. All right. In defense you are, of the You gospel. are an anachronism. <laughs> 9.99. Aaron, <laughs> you have a terrible hermeneutic. We are saved by grace alone, by faith alone, through Christ alone. We mm -hmm. are called to confess for our sins and repent, not by our works, and that no one can boast. It's a more empty assertions that you can't verify. I, I wish that I could be like religious people and just like make up whatever I want to say and then just say it like it's truth and then you know, have people give me millions of dollars for having lied to them. But unfortunately I have ethics. So. All right. Well, we'll carry on. And I don't mean to, I, I don't want to sound biased anybody. Uh, it's just a matter of, uh, it's not really a question uh, wrapped up in what you said there in defense of the gospel. Like I said, it's more of a proclamation. We do want to carry on. Ella Rant, $1.99. Lawrence Cross's nothingness is quantum potential. Thoughts on that up to a minute. No, not even up to a minute. We got no thoughts on that. Nobody's got any thoughts on that. I don't think it was even mentioned, fellas. So, Charles Laner, 499. Aaron, if you want proof of ghosts, just try emailing Stuart. Oh, I should have read that one first. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's well, like <laughs> that's fun, uh, Charles. You know, we we, we enjoy yeah. having a little laugh every once in a while. And I'm still seeing some floating turds in your comment section that want to accuse me of lying, but of course can never say anything that i've actually lied about you can't show that what i've said was false nor show how i knew it was false when i said it because you can never show that it was false there's a problem if well, you can't you... meet criteria one how are you going to make it a problem too well you heard it here you floating turds that's what aaron raw thinks of you uh and your uh, your criticisms there uh you know uh, check out our speakers they're both going to be linked in our description if you want to hear more from either of them easy walks five dollars how does science measure this and study what they they can't see or prove how does science measure or study what they can't see or prove is it supported is it not if it's not let's talk about what is all right Let's carry on. Nuzzy D, $1.99. Why is Christianity more true than any other? Uh, so, Stuart, I'm, Any I, I, other what? I, I think they mean... Bullshit uh, story? I think they mean more than any other religion. So, uh, Stuart, I'm going to give you up to... Uh, yeah, if you want to expound for 30 seconds why you think Christianity is... Because the grave... True. Because the grave of Buddha, Muhammad, Shirley MacLaine, they're all full. But Jesus Christ's grave... You never had a grave. Is Shirley MacLaine dead? No, she's alive. Yeah, but and 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 Jesus never had a grave, and wouldn't oh, have had because he, he would have been he would have been like tossed. Holy in. Sepulcher. He would have been tossed in with all of the the other that that, that were just refuse, like a big pile of people, Depends except for this uh, Joseph of Arimathea. Excuse me, uh, Josephus, who then wants to save his friend, and so he puts him in his own private tomb. Only he doesn't apparently get there, and there's now some you're... problem. And then we got a bullshit story about how the disciples later start recognizing random people in the crowd as if they're Jesus, and the people who don't, the people they recognize don't even cop to being Jesus. 
What? But they recognize him as being Jesus that, anyway. Chris, what are you talking about? All right, fellas. I'm trying to read you guys in on these super chats, but you, you're you riffing. You're riffing harder than rock stars, I'll tell you. Uh, and you, These guys are rock stars, so uh, hit that like button. and uh, Yeah, and, and can, we just, can we just come back to the summary of what would be the point? If if Christianity was real, obviously it isn't, but if, if, if Christianity was real, the whole thing is that we're supposed to believe it doesn't matter what you do it doesn't matter what your morality is it just matters what you believe do you believe the right type or brand of bullshit story for no reason uh, and, and and then you're going to go to hell if you don't so you have to violate the first commandment of the jews to believe that jesus is this god in front of god so you're going to you know, thou shalt have no other gods before me except that no that nobody comes through the father but through me so you have to violate that to believe in Jesus. And if you don't believe in Jesus, merciless, psychotic fucking torture forever and ever and ever and ever. It doesn't matter if you had good a reason because God is not a righteous judge. He just judges not morality, but whether you believe and what you believe. And, 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 if you did, and it doesn't matter why. You didn't, I didn't give you evidence God, I, God, I, Jehovah, hid all the evidence from you. I gave you only evidence to show that all of Christianity is bullshit. And so you believed my lie, and therefore I'm going to tra- I'm going to torture you forever. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> forever and ever and ever. That's, that, that was a great line. That's Christianity. I'm an annihilationist. I don't think it goes on forever. Let, let's carry on, fellas, because the longer we riff, the more we uh, generate interest in Super Chats. And you guys are, like I said, the more you carry on, the more you're going to keep yourselves here because uh, these questions are going to, uh, you know, create more big solos. So, Elrond, crime doesn't have religion. Cool. Uh, I think we can carry on. Abraham, Tardif for a dollar. That's your first Super Chat. Thanks for the dollar. Nine ninety nine from Mall Stewart. That was a stupid or stupid, a stupid and dishonest jab that you made to assert that the person you mentioned killed themselves because of atheism. Is it a self-identifying Christian has Let, never... Let's be fair. He said it wasn't because his worldview was empty. He did assert that the worldview was empty, and that is wrong. That is a lie. And But he did say that it wasn't because of that. And that was just his take, not mine. Proceed yeah. and, and hurry. So because atheism is not an empty right. worldview. People in the chat say that they want that, that I want people to be as empty as I am. I am fuller than most of your people in your chat. Well, let's carry on. I, I, I've always had a rewarding life. I wish everybody else could have could have enjoyed it life as much as I do. I'm 60 years old. I'm gonna die at some point relatively soon, and it's okay because I had a good run. I wish everybody if, else could say that. Yeah, they can't. What if you didn't have a good run? That's not okay. You just said it's okay because you did have a good run. Uh, because I feel good about it, yeah. So many people but, don't feel good about it. The majority of people in this world don't feel good about it. And, and don't have a good I run. get that. I get that. And I, I want to empathize with that. If I had had 60 years of struggle and pain and torture and failure, and that's all I've ever experienced, I would feel terrible about that. I don't know how to relate to anything other than what I've experienced. All right. I wish yeah. that other people could feel as rewarded as I do. If I, if I died when I was 20, I would have been happy. I mean, I just, because I, I had a good run then. It's just the guys who were dying in the Balkans, and they said it's only in the comfort of a white suburban home that we can say that we had a good life, a good run, and act like everything's fine. White suburban home? You I and didn't I... live in a white suburban home until I was forty. <laughs> all right, let's uh, let's carry on there, fellas. Come on, Ryan, I'm making the last point here since we're all all three of us are dabbling into commentary. It's all good. I'm um, no, my point there is back to your earlier personal question about my belief in God. That's one of them right there. And hey, that could be wishful thinking, where I'm just wanting everybody to get a fair shake in this life. But I think there's going to be a judgment day, and I want yeah, it and, very and... badly. How do you how do you not be of how do you not review how do you not reconcile how unjust that is? What's that? How do you not reconcile how unjust that is? No, every single bro, hold on here. Every single stoppage 
that you have in, say, the Middle East of the cycle of revenge, the revenge cycle, is when that people group believes that there is a judgment day so that they don't have to get it here on this earth. So how do you reconcile how unjust the notion of a judgment day is, especially within the myopic and insane confines of the God of Abraham? Look at the prison system. You keep people locked up their entire lives. Is that unjust? I don't advocate that. All right. Let's try to move on there from uh, from there, guys. I don't. Uh, we, I don't we, think that's effective because it's it, it. There's nothing about rehabilitation or forgiveness, and you know I'm about those, both so, of them. So, uh, Ivan Tchaikovsky for five dollars. Thank you, Aaron, for helping me re finally realize the lies of Christianity. Uh, there's, thanks for the compliment there, Ivan, uh, for the thanks. Uh, any idea if you and Gutsick Gibbon will have any more videos in the future? Gutsick. Are you Gibbon. asking if I will have other? videos with guts at Kibben? yeah i think they want to know if that's something you got planned in the future oh, i'm hoping so she's a fucking star all right excellent let's carry on yeah. there uh l around a dollar 99 ryan do your job time to answer the questions uh yeah i'm, I, I'm getting to it you know I, I like to let the people riff off and i think this is going to be probably the most we've gotten to expound on Stuart and aaron's beliefs on modern day debate uh albeit uh it was some warning from me that they're riffing a little harder than they usually do. Wits it gets it, 499. Physics at all scales shows us that all phenomena is in a process of seeking a state of equilibrium. What is the antidescent for the intrinsic order? Antidescent. I will yeah. grant that you either, in, in nature, you're either going to achieve balance for some time or you're going to fail to achieve balance for any time in which you, you had to calamity. So the, the only way you can prolong your being is to mean, you know, is to achieve balance, but there's, but there's no goal. I mean, it's not an, it's not intentional. All right. Well, let's carry on. Alarant dollar 99, bring Sharia law and ban beer here. Just kidding. No, never ban beer. Never take my sweet beer away from me all right now uh blaster master 85 dollars Stu, what convinces you personally that christianity is true yeah what is the appeal that would be my question let's try to get it in 30 seconds if you don't mind but is god of the universe actually loves you is with you here and there's an eternal reality awaiting i right, think but, but 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 aside from the fantasy biggest appeals well, well you said what, appeals. What is, i'm not talking what, ever here i'm simply talking since, since there's no i mean there's absolutely no indication that that's real why do you believe it anyway no it, it's one or i just wanted the first question there, there I, I think there's all the evidence in the world you know the teleological meaning none meaning meaning zero teleological argument meaning very so not one single fact in evidence at all Many biologists and many astrophysicists now are saying That's they're probably positive. that there's no evidence whatsoever. But you're asking me the attractiveness of it, and that was right. my. I, I want to know why you, why you, what, what is the appeal of believing something for which there is, according to the universal consensus, there's zero evidence at all. Period. Sorry, say that again. Yeah, none. Just, just, despite the fact there's absolutely no evidence <laughs> for it and a shit ton of evidence against it, why do you believe it anyway? Just because you say there's no evidence doesn't mean there's no evidence. But because there is no evidence, I am forced to say there is no evidence. Because it because you know how much evidence there is? I'm going to be literal. This is mathematically accurate. That's the evidence you have. So why do you believe it anyway? You're a dying breed, Leo. I'm pretty Leo? sure atheism. What movie are you quoting? Come on, bro. What about Bob? Really? You, you haven't seen What About Bob? Have no. you neither? No. Oh. But since oh, no. We're there is oh, not no, one we're not single Bob. fact in evidence for so your belief, which yeah. we established in the early part of this debate, why do you still make believe what is not evidently true anyway? What is the appeal? All right, let's do that. And within like 15 seconds, let's move on to the next one there, Stuart. Like Blaze Pascal talks about. If you find it attractive, then you will honestly start to look into the evidence. 
I don't think R and R. Wait, 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 wait. wait. So if, if I if I find it unattractive, yeah, you're not. If gonna, there's still if there's evidence, adventure. I'm going to look for it. It doesn't matter whether it's attractive or not. No, but you, if there's no evidence, then it doesn't matter if it's attractive. Totally false. Totally oh. false. I talk to kids about this all the time and adults. Kids. False. Okay, I'm if, glad you threw in adults at the end because that's I mean, the only ones I care about. If they come in and see that the gospel is unattractive, I have to change my identity to fit that of a god, then they're not going to honestly look for evidence. There's no way. Well, then and, why don't you present the evidence? Yeah. Oh, because there isn't any. That's why. You are biased. All right, there let's carry is on there, fellas. no evidence. There is not one actual fact in evidence to support your belief. Period. Right. That's it. That's L. That, right. We definitely know. We definitely know that you guys stand on those uh, pillars on this discussion. So uh, let's carry on. Wizard right. gets it. We is... have a shit ton of evidence to show that everything you believe is a lie, but we don't have fuck all to say that there's any truth to it. So why do you still pretend what is not true? I want to know. What is the appeal? Why do you care so much? Because I believe in truth, and it maddens me why? that I have to talk to people who refuse to, who don't care what the truth is, who Let's... tell me, who tell me deliberately that they know that what they believe is not really true, but they're going to believe it anyway, who say but... that these may be what the facts are, but I prefer to believe this. So that this bothers me. Great conspiracy theory called Christianity is harming the world, and you're out to set people free in a very driven way. I'm That's trying to be honest with people. That the thing that irritates me the most about your religion is the fact that it's entirely based on lies. That there's that everything you can say in defense of it, absolutely every single thing qualifies as a lie in defense of your belief. Everything. Zero exceptions. And there is nothing true about it. That bothers me. That's where As you're... somebody who loves truth and who only wants to believe things that are true, it, 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 it confuses me when I meet people like yourself who don't give a fuck what the truth is. You're going to believe the make-believe that you know is not really true and lie about it on top of that. That confuses me. Why would you do that? Just see truth differently. 15 That's, seconds there, Stuart. The truth is what the facts are, what we can confirm. We have, not, not whatever else we might assume or imagine beyond or instead of that. All right, hold on there, that, fellas. That is the realm of religion. We, that we, baseless we, speculation asserted as if it was a matter of fact. That's your belief system. We got more super chats pouring in the longer, like I said, you guys go. You so, better uh, get on faster super with chat. those super chats. It's not my fault. All right, Stuart, uh, Stuart 15 it's seconds. It's not my fault. <laughs> I was going to say, yeah, it, I was, I do what I can, guys, but. Uh, I am always long. We just want to see you get mad at some point. 10 we want to see it. seconds. Yeah. <laughs> I, I respect that Stuart's ship looks very much like my ship. Oh. <laughs> Ooh, very nice. <laughs> but yeah, so I'm I'm doing what I can. But that ship has that sunk. Talk. Yeah. So Do we need um, to uh, pop the cork on another one. Or are we going to get through this tonight? We're going to try. Uh, I don't know. Well, you. It's like I said. I'm I'm trying to uh, speed you guys along, but you guys got a lot of things. Yeah, you're, you're thinking about that. Hold on there, Stuart. I'm just kidding. We're, Keep going. <laughs> I was going to say, you're making this worse. <laughs> Stuart gets uh, Witzik, Stuart. Witzik gets it. Nine ninety nine. The first gulp from a glass of natural sciences will turn you into an atheist from the bottom of a glass. God is waiting for you. Aaron, when are you going to finish your drink? Ah, Witzik, you're just being a troll. I'm sorry, Witzik. I like you, but uh, you're being a bit trolly. Solo four ninety nine. Oh, uh, Solo four ninety nine. Why is it reasonable? Yeah, somebody told me that I should debate Witzik gets it. And I, I went and looked up, I don't know, two, three things, and I was convinced that Witsit doesn't get it, like about anything. <laughs> and so I decided not. Ooh, I, I, like I, I'm not though. qualified to give that person <laughs> the help that they need. Well, let's carry on then. Solo 499. Why is it reasonable for atheists to require visual evidence when the apostles of Jesus required visual evidence of the resurrection? Ah, because you have seen because you saw evidence. But blessed is he who has not seen and yet believed. Because we're selling a bullshit story, and so you're not supposed to question us. You're just supposed to s shut up and believe whatever we tell you because we tell you. That's what religions decree. All right, let's carry on from there. Um, 
And yeah, let's uh, let's try to mitigate the super chats because we want to let uh, everybody go at a good time. Elrond, uh, tra- transoxiana or transoxiania land above Oxus is the Latin name for the region and civilized located civilization located on lower Central Asia. I'm not sure if we. And which it gets it just proved that he doesn't get it. So, yeah, li- Aaron literally agreed to debate with me until I suggested atheism versus creationism, and I said, "But those are not, those are not diametrically opposed. There's not atheism versus creationism because there's athe because you know there's atheism versus theism, that's opposed. But creationism is an extreme version of that, and so Witsit gets it proved that he don't get it by trying to say that we well, know you have to have this extreme radical view, or else." And so I'm sorry that that's that's why I'll never debate wits it gets it because he don't don't get it at all well, wits it uh, don't get it. Let's try not to talk too much about other uh, people that aren't on the show right now. But uh, they're we, in we the are, chat. <laughs> but I was just say he's they're, not on the show right now. They're spewing their stupidity in the chat. <laughs> but uh, I was just say we do uh, debates on creation and evolution. So as and I'm for... happy to do that. But you know you can't get anybody with any accountability to debate me on that subject. Well, let's uh, let's see what we can do as far as the future goes. Yeah, you know, uh, let's see that happen. Our, our end is extending <laughs> the invitation, everybody there, and I'd like to see it. That'd be a lot of fun. Uh, so uh, this one from PC Surgeon, the original five dollars. Uh, I'm not a fan of Stewart's mic. Uh, yeah, well, that's fine. You know, y- you don't have to be a fan of it. I can hear Stewart great. So Charles Schrainer, five dollars. Frustrating to watch the. Uh, an abundance of evidence get dismissed by not countering uh, with their own evidence. Thanks, Aaron, for helping my deconversion. Uh, we'll take that as a compliment and carry on from there. Thanks, Charles. Uh, you know, if, if you if you don't feel like you got enough out of this discussion, I would just say, you know, go back two hours and you'll find all kinds of stuff. Uh, Ella Rond, $1.99. Aaron, okay, then religions are part of evolution. Uh, yeah. Yeah, it's it's the embarrassing part of our, you know, like our uh, our middle school years. Okay, War Boss, five dollars Canadian. Aaron, thank you for defending rationality and truth. You're amazing. Well, amazing indeed. Well, War Boss, we love the uh, the complimentary super chats. Those are a lot better than any diss tracks that we get. Alaron, dollar ninety nine. Aaron, atheism doesn't have objective morality. No, but we're the only ones who do. All right. Alarant, dollar ninety nine. Stuart, you are straw manning yourself. I'm not sure what that pertains to, so let's just carry on, fellas. I, I I'll I'll read it because you know Stuart's got a strong stomach for it and it's not really too ad hominy, but uh Kent McDonald Jr., five dollars. It's amazing that even when Aaron gives a broad lesson on history of Christianity and its borrowing of other religions, Stuart shrugs it off. Any thoughts there? Well, you know, if I come off as too defensive, then it shows that I don't have a very strong faith or relationship with my God. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> All that, right. was, that was wrong. <laughs> well, Nye says for sex, sex, sex. All right, we won't do any more Iron Maiden because my wife's trying to sleep. Next time, Aaron Ra and Stuart are on. Can I get all three of you to dress as Dr. Frankenfurter? We return to Transylvania. Oh, no, you, you have no idea how much you need to pay in Super Chats. Repair the tractor beam. Yeah, I was going to say, yeah, that's going to have to go directly to no, Aaron. No, honey. <laughs> if you want this, you should have been here 40 years ago. <laughs> <laughs> Darling, uh, calm down. Which it gets it, four ninety nine. My actual question was: Doesn't the initial establishment of a je- of objective moral standard necessitate necess- necessitate 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 necessitate? Jeez, a prerequisite of intention. Boys, I I'm having trouble because because uh, I don't have my glasses on here. Hold on. Yeah, I, I think you can make that out. Doesn't the initial establishment of an objective moral standard necessitate uh, a prerequisite of intention? No, for the reason I explained earlier, like an hour ago. All right, like I said, fellas, there's lots of debate to go through. So, you know, if you miss something, go back. I'm sure you'll find it. Uh, Lilith for $20 for Snake, the truth teller. Well, 
Thanks, Lilith. Uh, Toyota for $20. No question attached. Thanks for the $20. Uh, we appreciate it. In defense of the gospel, four ninety nine. dollars Aaron, would you agree you wouldn't have morality uh, you live by today without being raised in a Christian household? Uh, yeah, I would definitely disagree with that because it doesn't matter where I lived. It doesn't matter what time period I lived in. If I lived in a pre-Christian time period, I, I think I would still have the same morality, All and right. it would not be Christian. All right. All right. Because Christian, Christianity oh, has, can claim no part of my, 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 my respect for humanity or truth. All right, well, let's move on from there. Elrod 499, Stuart, Western intelligence agencies overthrow two Iranian regimes. We also witnessed a miracle in Taliban replacement with Taliban for $2.3 trillion. It's also kind of like a declaration, so hey, what do you think there? It's getting late. What's the point? I'm not sure. Uh, Western intelligence agencies overthrow two Iranian regimes. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Called a miracle. Toyota, $20. Stuart, next surgery you have, your consciousness is in an antith uh, anti oh my goodness, antithesiologist's hands. We work hard to ensure you live. Your brain is 100% responsible for your consciousness. End of story, bra. Phineas Gage. Look him up. Yeah, but why would you bring him up? Because it's the same. It's the same deal. Yeah, but I'm just. I'm just curious. Why would you bring up my argument in your defense? <laughs> because it's midnight, and I'm switching to your side. Oh. Okay. <laughs> oh my goodness. Well, yeah, we did. We didn't have to go go in late. We got to hurry because people are going to pour in more. Stop. For Walker, five dollars. Most secular scholars don't even believe Joseph's Joseph of Arimathea existed. Just for your information, information, just FI. FYI. Oh, I, I'm sure. And his name was Josephus. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, exit dissolved. Two dollars. Stuart, one eyewitness account of raised Jesus, not nine. False. False. Fact -checked. You've been fact checked. Look at that. You see? Kid. <laughs> Let's move with on. Or without yeast. Jason, 83. Stu, what most influenced the growth of Christianity, the miracle stories, or its ethical system? Constantine. Pre-Constantine, there were thousands of Christians. And Const then post-Constantine, millions. Constantine took it on because it was so big. It was a smart political move. It was, a, it was a smart strategic move to completely undermine and reverse Christian teachings such that no longer were they in renunciates and pacifists now it be, suddenly becomes onward christian soldiers and prosperity gospel but don't forget he converts fortunately all right eleron i'm gonna come uh you know consolidate your super chats here because a lot of your questions have already been answered here and i'm gonna ask uh Aaron, uh over here from thomas garman what is your favorite breed of snake oh um, I, I I have a couple of uh, false water cobras behind me that I I, I very much like. I I, I my my young female I, I love her to death. I, I recently got a uh, a reticulated python, and I'm finding that they are not deserving of the reputation that they've had. All right, well you heard it here, fellas. That's uh, that's the one uh, he's calling out tonight. Uh, that could change uh, sometime. So uh, you know, check in again. Cole Beasley, five dollars. Aaron is my hero and reminds me of what Billy Bob Thornton would look like with a mustache and long hair and the darkest beer imaginable. Cheers, Aaron. Aaron, sorry. Thank you. How far back on your tw on your? Uh super chats are you we're almost to the end here because uh are we it, really okay yeah elorandi had a couple more super chats here but a lot of them uh are either just ad homs or you know questions we've already answered so we're just gonna move on from them sorry yeah, Elrond. I'm, I'm glad that people are paying for these because the ones that they haven't been paying for i've been seeing some really stupid shit in your chat i should just i should just not look at the chat because i it's think you should idiocy. because it seems it seems like you're having a great time with it i mean you know there's there's some dumb motherfuckers in your chat 
I'm Billy Bob Thornton. I've got nothing over here. I will just wait until the comments afterwards, you know? Uh, <laughs> at least I haven't put myself on mute tonight, everybody. Isn't that just great? Because last time I was on here with Matt uh, and uh, Trey, I, I kept putting myself on mute, which was a real pain in my butt. So uh, let's move on. Hi, Flyer, uh, Flyer, 499. Maybe Satan sent Aaron to pull us away from Jesus. Just a thought. Well, it would have been a good move if, 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 there, if there was a Satan and a Jesus, which, of course, I don't believe. Think about this, because I made this argument at least a decade before, almost two decades before I became a Satanist myself. I was arguing that the, the worst thing that Satan ever did was try to reason with Jesus. And that in one of these stories, you know, Jesus uh, or Satan takes Jesus up to this tall mountain and he starts trying to negotiate with him in a way that is obviously suspiciously unbelievable. These are not the sorts of things that a reasonable person would have said to Jesus. Ten seconds. But I could I could see how the propaganda has played into this. And if there was a real Satan, that he's trying to reason against faith. And also from my understanding of, of Hashatan and the Zoroastrian scriptures, that anybody that tries to reason against faith becomes the Satan. And so that meant that I am Satan. And I figured that out 20 years ago before I joined the Satanic Temple. All right. Well, wait, 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 wait. Oh, go. Stuart's got some thoughts. David. Go, Stuart. Go, King David, Job, Doubting Thomas. I know you like to pick on Doubting Thomas, so maybe I shouldn't have said that one. They are questioning God, putting him in the dock non-stop for about what you combine those two books 250 chapters worth and god allows it most of the time like 90 percent yeah of the time. and then jesus comes in and says thou shalt not put the lord thy god to the test so that's thomas and the reason why he said that was because thomas had already received evidence from the disciples and so he had many opportunities and so now finally jesus is saying hey buddy it's time to stop doubting got plenty of evidence now take the leap All right, yeah, but he criticized him he criticized him for asking for evidence. No, it wasn't that you've had enough evidence and now you should believe. No, you said, blessed is he who has not seen and yet believe, because we're looking for only credulous gullah believers in my church. No, no. He never beats up on anybody when it comes Except to Except Thomas directly. Well, oh, he's, he's harder on his disciples, but look at how he reinstates Peter. I mean, Peter didn't believe. Not only did he not believe, he was rejecting him completely. All right, well, yeah, we we can have a lot of interesting conversations seconds. until I deconvert you. <laughs> All right, let's hey, carry on. Listen to this real quick. My buddy yesterday got unbaptized after I baptized him. I didn't know that was a thing in the Jewish synagogue. I'm, I'm a little bit upset about it, to be honest. <laughs> I got unbaptized a year I ago. I got unbaptized a year ago at by, by, uh, at the Satanic Temple event in uh, in in the uh, the Idaho State Capitol in Boise, and then I recorded a number of unbaptisms uh, last week in uh, in Washington State at the the, 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 the Sean Fute concerts, where they were there, there was a, there was a big Satanic gathering that was also going on in the same thing. There was a bunch of unbaptisms going on there, and. Uh, I got to record Rebecca Vitzman and her husband being unbaptized. I was proud to be part of that. Oh my All right. God. Well, let's carry on, everybody. Although, um, I have to complain that the way the Satanists do the, the unbaptism, I still don't think is, is correct or complete because it doesn't involve a blow dryer. <laughs> well, let's carry on, fellas. Uh, that's good. Good thoughts on that. Robin Webster, uh, five dollars. Please learn Bart Ehrman if you wish to quote him. He has a course on how the Gospels are anonymous, and some versions of the Bible says so. Yep. Yes. Yes. That's exactly right. My point was Bart, though, does not hold that in a dogmatic way. Look at his debate with um, Peter Williams, Peter J. Williams. In no way is he like they are anonymous. He thinks they probably are, but in no way is he dogmatic about it. Okay, right. but how? What, what's the difference? If he thinks they're probably anonymous, meaning we don't have any any means of identifying an author for these, and I agree with him, we don't have a way of identifying, and no reason to assume an author's name like you erroneously do, then no. how is it dogmatic? 
because the burden of proof still remains on you guys and you have having... you for you assuming have... that oh. you know who the author is nobody oh. knows who the author is you're the one pretending that you know we don't know therefore burden of proof all on you oh the definition of burden of proof is i know that christians I'll... hate nothing more than the burden of proof but be, it's because you keep making these empty ass assertions of impossible absurdity that you can't back up. Email Bart. Email Bart, and we'll see who's right. That's all I got. Okay. Okay. All right. Let's Send me on. the exact question because I want this in documentation. I can email Bart, and I will, but I want the exact question documented from you. I will quote that exact question when I send it. All right. I like That's He's fine. Began skeptic when it came to this just like i'm a healthy skeptic on this whole debate topic that's why people wait wait wait, wait. you you don't get to believe credulous shit for no evidence and then claim to be a skeptic why people say hey he's one step away from atheism because but you don't get to believe make believe credulous bullshit with no evidence whatsoever and then pretend to be a skeptic you don't get to do that well 30... i'm not gonna allow it well, you and Daniel Dennett are two of the only brights in this world, self-proclaimed brights, and I need to get there, and I'll get there. I, I do not self-proclaim as a bright, nor do I think that Dennett does. Next I've met him. He's a brilliant man. I love him. All his he, books. It's all written in his books. All right. We're he, going to try wonderful. to read. We're going to try to read all the uh, super chats over five dollars to uh, get these whacked out. And already, I already said, uh, Elorante, uh, you know, most of the questions that you asked there, like massive respect for taking care of the. Kids, I haven't read stuff. any of the books of the so-called new atheists. I haven't read yep. any of them. I read scientific articles, and that's almost exclusively what I read is scientific stuff. I have read a handful of, of of uh, of course the comparative religious mythologies, and I've read some analyses of those. But I don't like going into non. I don't like going into fiction, All so right. I prefer to read science. So if Daniel Dennett or Richard Dawkins or Sam Hammer Saris or whoever had published something, I didn't read it. So right. I don't know what they said. I don't worship anybody, as I pointed out before. All right. Well, let's carry on with the super chats, and uh, you heard it here. Uh, Aaron says he doesn't worship anybody, so uh, you know. And then some asshole clear. calls me a hypocrite for not being hypocritical. Don't worry about the old super chat. There's all kinds of people in there, and they're saying yeah, all kinds of things. Uh, Bender is great, uh, says for six ninety nine Canadian. Not really on topic, uh, but does Aaron listen to uber heavy music, something like Cannibal Corpse, or does he get into anything heavier? Uh, not super heavy. I have listened to Decapitated. What was it? Oh, man. I'm trying to remember. Uh, decapitated. What the fuck? I can't remember the name. Decapitated the cow, cannibal, cannibal or cattle decapitation, something like that. But I listen to Sirius XM. When I do, it's always on the um, the uh, extreme metal channel, and I don't have a lot of time, unfortunately, unless I'm driving someplace. I wish that I had more pop culture references. Uh, my favorite band at the moment is In This Moment, uh, and of course Ginger. Uh, and and Kubla Khan, and it, it is it is cattle decapitation, and that that is I I do appreciate them. I do like that sort of music. It makes me feel nice. If that makes any fucking sense. Oh yeah. Well, I was gonna say. I mean, I I feel kind of uh, once again out of place because I don't know who any of those bands are because most of the bands I like Amon Amar, but it's the same kind of shit all the time. And I, I feel like I've kind of been there like 30 years ago. Well, for the sake of fun, uh, Stuart, what's your favorite band? Oh, I don't know. If I'm going to be a little cliche, Mumford and Sons. Oh, nice. No, I was going to say, yeah, I don't know. For me, there's sometimes toss up between like Queen and Dio and Judas Priest. And uh, I don't know. There's, there's... Are you in the no I, you... I've, seen, I've seen Alice Cooper, uh, uh, Motley Crue, Black Sabbath, Ozzy Osbourne. I've seen, I've seen all of it. Judas Priest. I've seen their farewell concert three times. Oh yeah, the, he keeps saying farewell, and then you know comes back for more. Ozzy's exactly. done more farewells. Ozzy, Ozzy keeps doing farewell. Judas Priest keeps doing farewell. I've seen their farewell concert like three times each. 
Now that makes you uh, wonder. In two thousand years, will they say it was a, re- a resurrection of Ozzy Osbourne? Well, uh, let, let me tell you what I, 20, what, 20, I noticed, <laughs> you know? what I noticed. What I what I noticed back in the day, you, I could go to the concert for fifteen dollars uh, and pay dollar drafts back in the eighties. I paid one hundred and forty. And then I go to see. Uh, this was to see Ozzy and Judas Priest. But then in the last decade, I would go to see Ozzy and Judas Priest, and it would be a hundred and fifty dollars and ten dollar drafts. Yep. So everything got ten times more expensive, but nobody's making ten times as much money. No, I hear that. I like I just said, I spent one hundred forty four bucks to go see Judas Priest. Uh, it was a great show. Good show, though, wasn't it? Oh my God, he can scream! <laughs> it was amazing. He's still going. Uh, Zero four ninety nine. Uh, that was his question there. So, uh, thanks for that. Ryan for $20. I have seen Judas Priest so many times just in the last five years since they announced their retirement. I've seen. Oh, nice. <laughs> My old band, we used to be able to rip through uh, a really hard Judas Priest song called Tyrant. Uh, it's really old priest and it's a really hard song to play in a band because it just changes all the time. So My 20... favorite priest song, you stitch me up good, then you cut me down. Uh, it was, uh, yeah, burning so up, you have to keep burning you up, hanging their, uh, around. Uh, yeah, exactly. I love that stuff, song. But yeah, keep me waiting. It, it, it's, it's not part of the yeah. song. It's not to part of their tour anymore. What the the one that that really gets yeah, me is the Sentinel. I always I go waiting to hear the Sentinel, and there was one tour where they didn't play the Sentinel, and I felt so dejected. Ah, uh, yeah, they yeah, as you say, the Sentinel. There's a live of it online, and it's really wicked. But uh, yeah, that's one of the. I got Firepower here on vinyl, and I've got um, uh, Killing Machine, which is the album you just referenced. And one of the songs I really want to do is Delivering the Goods. I was actually trying to get Sony to give us the rights to that for this show uh and and emailing them and being a real butt because uh i was like that'd be so sick you Um, are a complete freak i know uh, young man thank you i want to go to a show with you (laughs) (laughs) yeah we'll rock on it's good it's good i was gonna say i'm hoping to be down in texas actually to, to scream and shout at people that'd be a lot of fun uh, one of these times I'll be down here for one of the well, live well, appearances. Give me, give me a heads up because there's a number of shows we could do. Oh, that's fun. I, I'm always always interested in that. Uh, so, yeah, $20. Uh, credit when credit is due. Stuart, your ability, uh, uh, your ability, you come, lost debates is impressive. You're just being rude. For $20, Ryan, and, and a fellow Ryan, you're just telling Stuart that he lost. You know, I think everybody won here tonight because... We're all having a good time. Four Bring 99. it, Ryan. Bring it. What was that? Keep song? It up. Just told Ryan to bring it, and I like it. I like the edginess. No being nice on here. Yeah. Stop nice it. niceties. If it's all about evolutionary theory, then niceness is weakness, and it should be the Superman, Nietzsche Superman, and we should live for ourselves, and ourselves should be God. <laughs> oh gosh, that sounds familiar. That. Re- Reminds me of what I read in Mein Kampf when when Adolf Hitler adamantly denounced uh, evolution. Uh, yeah, I was gonna say that that took a, that took a little turn. Four ninety nine. Uh, sorry, forty nine ninety nine. Thank you so much, uh, W M X ninety nine. First time catching you live. My eight year old wanted to ask you why you guys are up so late. Why are we up so late? My goodness, these guys wanted to talk. That's what it ended up being. That was a deeper these question. These guys, than including. Mine. <laughs> The rest of the question says, great show and demonstration on both sides on how to use thinking, critical thinking skills and how to not use critical thinking skills. So um, it's, you know what, you're enigmatic. I have no idea who that's for. So we're just going to say that's a win for everybody once again. Um, Elrond, once again, uh, check the rest of the debate. I think your questions will be answered. Mutt, mutt, uh, keep children away from any religions, comments up to a minute there, fellas. No thoughts? All right. Sean Carter, $5. Stuart, are you educated? And if so, why you are partaking in the tree of knowledge? The ultimate sin. Wait, say that again. Stuart, are you educated? And if so, why are you partaking in the tree of knowledge? Because that's the ultimate sin. Yeah. Almost to the end. 
God gave us God gave us total freedom other than one thing. Sounds like good parenting actually. You don't want to give free license to everything to children. And so there was guidelines, but we thought that we knew better than God. But not only that, we thought God did not have his best for us, and we needed to have our own best for us. So we worshipped ourselves, because you have to worship something. Because you don't have to worship anything. We know what happens when there's ultimate freedom. And in this country, the only moral objective, really, in terms of what everybody think is, thinks is right, is everybody should have ultimate freedom. And if you look at every psychological study... Except every, that it's not that case. Every single child is struggling... Well, because with, we're always... We're, we're leaning toward what is best for society, and Stuart demands... Anxiety is through the roof. Misrepresenting the atheist position. Divorce well, increase... Close it out. Increase depression, increase suicide, increase... A lack of forgiveness increase would go with divorce. Except that we're all, I'm the one that's advocating for forgiveness increase, and his belief system doesn't even allow for that. So will you just quit lying? <laughs> I'm just giving the stats. I'm not making a case. You're for just me. lying. That's no, all you're doing. For either of close it out. I'm not yeah, gonna... that, that's all you're doing. You're just <laughs> lying, misrepresenting my position, stating things that are not oh, no, actual, no, no. period. No, no, no. This is just, I'm talking about freedom right now. No, you're just... not. Yeah. All right. Well, let's carry on there, fellas. Uh, Truth Powers dollar ninety nine. Aaron ever tried debating Matt on hard atheism? Who's Matt? I think they mean Matt Dillahunty on hard atheism. Why? Why would I debate Matt on hard atheism? Well, there you go, Truth Powers. That's uh, that's Aaron's thoughts about that. Five dollars from zero hate. Nah, no question attached. Thanks for that. Uh, in defense of the gospel, Aaron. If they were selling a BS story, why were all the early Christians martyred for what they were proclaiming? Peter was crucified upside down because he didn't feel worthy to die like Christ. Say that again. So they're asking why people would die for the story. So, Aaron, if you were selling a BS story, why were all the early Christians martyred for what they were proclaiming? Peter was crucified upside down because he didn't feel worthy to die like Christ. Because we don't know that any of that happened. All of the, Almost all of that is propaganda, like the shit that we listen to on most of our news today. Except, it, all, except there are so many non-Christian sources that talked about it, too. Okay, I would so over. We're getting, we're getting an awful lot of propaganda, enemy attestation. Okay, like what? Again, like let's just go with Occam's razor on this one. Okay, like I'm pretty sure that they were dying. So we could say maybe they hallucinated. Even go with one of the naturalists, okay. but I don't know if it's just. It and did. so we have a number of zealots who cut their own balls off so yeah. that they could catch the comet Hale Bop in the 1990s. And so that proves that Hale Bop is real. No, it's no, no, no. No. It's, oh, oh, of course not. My okay. my example doesn't prove your point. I I get it. I get it. But they knew oh, all right. to be I. So when people do stupid shit in defense of their religion, if it, it doesn't count unless it's Christianity. So we can come up with a number of different examples from different religions. Would you like to hear? A number of different examples of crazy, stupid shit people did to torture themselves over their different beliefs that were not Christianity. This isn't. Or even, does it just not matter unless it's Christianity? This isn't even in the realm of the debate. Oh, of course. Let's okay. tie that back in with this question here. Zero hate five dollars. Is morality subjective? We'll kick it over to you, Stuart. No. no. <laughs> Objective. Really? There has to be deviation. Really? And I think there's. How do you evil. get more? How do you get objective morality? Got to be connected to some type of spiritual realm, I would say. But, the... but of course, it can't be because there's no such thing. So, how do you get to a, an objective morality? Well, from a materialist perspective, I would just say the shooter should go scotch free because maybe they were brought up in a bad home. Except that I, as I already explained twice earlier in this show, the source, the one real source for our morality is the fact that we are a social species, and so we have to rely on our being able to cohabitate productively and stand by our word and show empathy for our family, friends, and fellows. I did explain this to you twice, yeah. and you don't have a means of objective morality. All you have is 
this asshole pretending to speak for God, who is an obvious liar, is then using his subjective opinion to speak for God's subjective opinion. You don't have an objective morality. You don't have a way to know whether something is moral or not. I do, and so I can judge your Bible and your God as both being immoral. I believe I, I, I up, told you 30 seconds. Because objective morality has to do with all gods, not the Christian God. Not, no, no, it has no it has Christ, fuck all to do with gods. It has to do with people. With Jesus Christ as it has to do with people, the one not there. our we'll magic let, uh, imaginary friends. Well, let's do it. Close this one out so we can carry on there because we got a few more. We've only got three more, but still, let's uh, let's do it. Oh my gosh, we got an actual number, Stuart. There's a there's a light at the tunnel. There is holy light. Where? Yeah, exactly. Right. We're gonna. Make I may it. not need to get another beer, but I'm gonna. Well, you go ahead and do that. Um, I've 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 run out. That's fine. Uh, you know, that's that's good for me. Um, Aaron stepped out, so uh, I did say we'll, we're only going to ask questions over five dollars just to close this out. Um, but Aaron, are you a fan of Nirvana? Yes or no? No. No, not feeling them either. I, I I never really was a big fan either myself. I was into that prettier prettier metal and I don't know grunge. And... Closest I came to to liking Nirvana was liking Weird Al Yankovic. <laughs> All right, let's carry on. Uh, Lele Hare says for five dollars, if there's no promise of reward and no threat of punishment, would Stewart still worship his god? Yes. Why? Because it's it's more about the relationship with him than it, it is about it, it, the value of the magic imaginary friend, carrot or a stick. All right, let's. La I'm ask sorry, this. I didn't get an answer to my question. Go ahead. <laughs> you're, you're not the one asking the questions here. I, I, I did just wait. ask a question. No, you're an hour. You're an hour behind me. It's only eleven twelve there. Okay, <laughs> it is. I, you can't answer that question. It is one twelve here. Right, I've, I've, I've gotten the look from my wife like. Twice, but that's okay. She's she's crashed out now. <laughs> Sorry, Tori. All right. She hates when I say that. Fifty. Yeah, believe me, my wife is going to have words for me too. Why did you let this go on so long? I, I get it. <laughs> well, that's all right. You know, I I, I got into a little uh, car accident in my wife's car there a few weeks ago, and the guy that I got in the car accident with was driving his wife's car as well. Oh. That's why I drive a road warrior car separate from my wife. Boy, we were all in trouble. We were all in trouble with our wives on that day. Tafik, last super chat. If you throw any more in the super chats, I'm not going to read them because we got to let these guys go. Fifty dollars, Stuart. Why would God use fear in order for humans to obey Him? It kind of contradicts the idea of an all-loving God. Even if He gave us free will, there are still better ways to show love than fear. Yeah, it's called justice. Justice shows love. If you don't have justice. You don't have any form of love. Just like R and I were talking about earlier, you have to have some type of judgment for these people who have not had a fair shake in life. Everybody wants that. I hope there is one. Maybe Aaron's right. Maybe there is no judgment day. And all those ladies with all the corrective surgeries who I've had to counsel over the years, it was just a tough shake. And their husbands beat them to almost to death, and they win, yeah. and their husbands get off scot-free. All right. I, I wish that that were not the case, but it is. And then Frankie P. says, No proof of evolution. Uh, yeah, there is. And I'm not lying. I can bring it, but you can't. Fucking coward. All Sorry, right. I shouldn't be dealing with your chat. It's all right there, Aaron. You're allowed <laughs> to have fun with this uh, this program any way you'd like to, and I'm glad you are. So, uh, Aaron, uh, you know, if you got a, a, up to one minute, well, I'm going to let you close out on your thoughts on our conversation. Is Christianity true? And uh, hit that like button, anybody who hasn't. Uh, we're past our 666. Uh, Bruce Dickinson didn't appear uh, to sing any songs, so I'm sorry about that, guys. I lied. So the, the fact that there is no God is kind of an impediment to Christianity being true. Uh, the fact that Jesus was an idiot, first century faith healer and fraud is another problem. Uh, and then I think we kind of just stop there. The fact that there's no supernatural there's no mind body dualism there is no soul even in the original version of christianity where the christianity just just has people just getting up being undead i guess in a zombie apocalypse kind of uh, sort of a state none of that has any truth to it at all neither does any of the old testament that jesus constantly refers to we know that the flood never happened the tower of babel never happened adam and eve never happened all of that is absolute bullshit um 
it's a real problem that we've had to waste so much of our Western culture pursuing these idiocies, these Aesop's fables, that we know that there's no truth to any of it. It's disturbing to me. And that the, and that the belief system not only requires that you make believe things that are not true but that you reject things that are true that's probably the bigger problem that i and it's the thing that i have the biggest problem with where people will tell me will admit to me that they don't care what the truth is they're gonna believe what they want to believe that's the biggest damn problem all right. Well, thank you, Aaron, for your closing statement there. And Stuart, up to a minute there, uh, your closing thoughts on our discussion this evening on is Christianity true? I just think, you know, why was it that Jesus was able to get the Jewish the Jewish people really around him to believe that he was God? Like, how could he have over and, the unthinkability of that? Well, why did he succeed as the only person who ever claimed deity and also hell. founded a major, indeed the largest movement and religious faith? first answer is that this life must have been exquisitely beautiful that he had. The greatness we get a glimpse in the Gospels must have been smitten those around him. It is extraordinarily difficult to claim to be perfect and divine and then to get the people who actually live with you to believe it. But Jesus did just that. That's why Christianity is true. All right. Well, thank you. And uh, thank you, Aaron Ra and Stuart, uh, for coming out here tonight and having this discussion. Uh, and thank you to everybody in the live chat that uh, uh, kept themselves friendly. And to those who didn't, well, uh, you know what we think of you, you know, get wrecked. <laughs> uh, so uh, that's fun. Uh, we'll see you next time, uh, everybody at Modern Day Debate. And, uh, you know, uh, maybe I'll put on the solo. Maybe I'll put on a song of me singing. I don't know. It's fine. I got all kinds of stuff here. Uh, thanks, Aaron and uh, Stuart, again. A uh, big uh, round of applause, a virtual round of applause for our speakers. And we will see you next time. Cheers, everyone.